<clears throat> hello. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? We're here. Classic cast number 30. It's been a long time since we've done a classic cast, uh, but we're back. We've been really busy with a lot of stuff. We're here with Tiff, so we're here with Stay Safe, as always. And uh, also, we're here with our good friend, Mad Season. He is doing a face reveal today for us. A, a oh. face reveal. This is the real Mad Season show. Yes, he's here. Very, very excited to have him here. And uh, yeah, we have a Don't lot to look talk at about. Me. <laughs> we, we got a lot to talk about. Um, beta ended, right? Which is uh, where we've been. We, we've been in beta world for a long time. And uh, we're focusing on the end of the beta, doing some dueling tournament stuff, the uh, world first race for Retail WoW. Uh, we, were, we were doing a lot of world first race stuff, stay safe with Red Bull, uh, myself and Tips for the method race. And uh, now we're back and we're ready to talk. So, Mad Season, how are you, man? I'm pretty good. Can I do my intro? Uh, sure. Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another podcast for you. Wait, wait, you messed it up. It's first. It's dun 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 dun. Uh, <laughs> missed opportunity. Damn it! Oh, <laughs> let's cancel it. I'm done. So uh, yeah, guys. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us today, and we'll see you guys uh, for the next class guest in about two months. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, Matt Season, it's good to have you on, man. Like, uh, it was cool to play with you during the beta. That was the first time I ever really talked to you. How how did you like the beta? Beta was fun. Uh, I got in a bit late, but uh, I mean, it's it's you know, uh, as far as classic is concerned, I've been talking about it for geez, probably ever since 2016, even before the original announcement. So, you know, I don't play private servers as well. Mm -hmm. So actually being able to play it was like a really big deal for me because it was the first time since, let's see, January 27, 2007, right? So about 12 years for me. And no, man, it was it was everything I ever imagined it to be. And it, it was super, super fun. The community aspect was on point. The uh, Just the actual gameplay was on point as well. And uh, like really, it, it sucked when it ended too because now I'm kind of like, I need my fix, right? I need my fix, but <laughs> yeah. 20 yeah. more days. Are you experiencing so, that post beta depression, man? Yeah, and I'm kind of filling it in with more videos. So uh, I talked to you guys a bit earlier off stream, but I've just been editing, editing 10 hours, 12 hours a day. So I guess uh, I'm still getting my fix in, in one way or another. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, all, all three of us actually have played private servers since Vanilla WoW ended. Mm -hmm. So you returning to the beta after, you know, 12 or 13 years of not playing, was it pretty much what you had? Sorry, your voice. You, cut you, out. you cut out a little bit at the end there, Steve. My voice cut out. Was the beta, uh, classic beta, pretty much what you remembered of Vanilla WoW, or were there some weird nuances that you had forgotten about? Uh, there were a lot of little things that I forgot about, like uh, just just the little stuff. Like I guess the rogue stealth animation was off, or something. Uh, that's something that slipped past me, and you know, just a lot of little stuff like. Um, you know, just details with like weapon skills and stuff that I misremembered. But, mm -hmm. you know, like the big picture stuff, like I said, like the community aspect of it, it that's the thing I'm most excited about. And I hope we talk about it a lot in this podcast. Uh, that was like, it's the most important thing for me in the game. And that pretty much was as I remembered it. So I guess like to answer your question, like a lot of the minor stuff I, I tend to forget, but I mean, it has been 12 years, but like the, the big picture stuff is no, pretty much as I expected it to be. Right. So do, um, you know, same with me, like the first time we had really interacted, uh, I think was on the beta and, uh, mm -hmm. actually Mad season, Mad season helped out a ton with the, uh, the dueling tournament that we did on Asmund's channel, uh, Mad season, stay safe, both actually stay safe with the, with the idea to, to move around the planet and, uh, and the planet move around the world. <laughs> and, uh, I got something in my eye, but, uh, move around the world and actually like, uh, have everybody, I have like warlocks summoned to different locations and stuff if we need to. And mm. then uh, Mad Season was able to coordinate all that up for us. So so both Stay Safe and Mad Season were like a huge help for for all that. Um, but uh, but yeah, so what are your... You you play a warlock. Is that what you're going to yep, main the all, all the way through? Or is that just what you uh, played for the beta? That's just what I played for the beta. It was between warrior and warlock. And, and just playing the warlock is... I kind of figured out I'm, I'm a melee at heart, right? I don't mm. know. It, there's something about melee and classic that I just I, I just love. Uh, no, no offense to Warlocks out there. It's probably going to be my first main, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I played a Rogue in my original uh, play back in 05 to 07. So I just, you know, I want to go Warrior this time because it's, I mean, it's kind of like the mascot of my channel anyway. But 
I did want to expand a bit more. He said like the summoning uh, for the dueling tournament. Mm -hmm. I also want to give because uh, it, it wasn't just just me and stay safe. Uh, there's also a guy named Fedanax who helped with the summons, and McConnell also lent a hand. Yeah. DJ Penguin, I saw him in chat there, and um, McConnell was helpful. Yeah, I he was. He helped you, Dude, really? Screenshots, oh. or I don't believe you. Dude, Indeed. I'm telling you guys, I've been saying this forever. McConnell secretly runs the WoW section behind the scenes, and nobody believes me. Every every single <sighs> drama decision, anything that happens that you guys see on Twitch, it's McConnell has scripted the entire thing. He's the overlord. I'm telling you guys, nobody believes me, but that's how it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. He is the kingmaker, dude, for sure. <laughs> yeah but uh but no yeah that's that's awesome and, and that was a whole lot of fun so so you you made a warrior you've made a warrior all, all like basically your entire time playing wow or was it just back in vanilla no uh vanilla was actually rogue i played a rogue mainly well i first leveled a paladin i was a ret retribution paladin of course for choice. some reason i didn't stick with it i'm not sure what's wrong with me <laughs> but uh i guess i didn't like uh you know well my guild kind of forced me to heal, as it tends to happen with paladins in classic. But I was I was kind of caught in between. I would like use of the bear gear still, mm -hmm. and I was retribution spec because you know back then you can't tell like what spec someone is. Yeah. So I throw out like three heals, go out of mana, and then you know I'm AFK for the rest of the fight. <laughs> and then, then I event because they wouldn't let me DPS, so I eventually switched to rogue. So, but no, I I, I want to go warrior this time just because it's melee, but it's a different experience. And I was thinking of retribution mm -hmm. paladin, but. I didn't want to just be in your shadow the whole time, so I think I think it's just best to go warrior. So, so when did you start playing? When did you start playing vanilla? Oh man, you like to ask me my favorite question. I, I've gone over this on YouTube uh, mm -hmm. uh, a bunch. I, I I take every excuse to talk about this. Yeah. I I started in March of two thousand and five. Uh, a couple months late, a few months, well, four months late, I guess it would yeah. be right. Still good. Five months. Um, I played a game called. Star Wars Galaxies, uh, you guys may have heard of that one. That was my first MMO. Mm -hmm. and, and let me know if I'm getting off track here, but I played that basically until I ran out of friends because they all quit for this game called World of Warcraft. <laughs> and I, I, I eventually joined. I ran out of people to play with. Uh, yeah, in March 2005, and, you know, just the rest is history from there. There you go. And have you been playing pretty consistently all the way from vanilla up to DFA or taking breaks? Or... Uh... I played all of Vanilla, most of Burning Crusade, all of Wrath, and Cataclysm and Mists of Pandaria is when I, I kind of started to uh, lose interest a little bit. I, I kind of let my subscription go. I played like probably, eh, in total about half of those expansions each. And then, I, like I said earlier, uh, before we started stream, I played all of Draenor for some reason. Uh, I guess I'm crazy. That's when I started my YouTube channel, though, so I guess I had more reason to play it. And then all of Legion and all of BFA so far. So for most of the game, I guess really just Cataclysm and Mist would be like my weakest area in terms of playtime. Yeah. And uh, you brought up your YouTube channel specifically, starting content in WAD. One thing that I've always loved about your content is that pretty much from the beginning, at least from the beginning of when I started watching your videos, mm -hmm. it was always kind of classic oriented and is always kind of very like throwback. Mm hmm uh, when did you start making classic videos and what compelled you to start making these videos, especially because you started before the classic announcement even happened? Well, as, as far as classic is concerned, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, since the channel's creation, I always use that classic transmog for Warrior. Mm -hmm. And the number one comment on my channel is your voice sucks. And number two <laughs> was your transmog sucks. And I've changed nothing between both of those. <laughs> and I've done all right. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, I guess really specifically with Classic, I, I, I started that in Legion, and not really for like any huge reason. I think just one day I was feeling nostalgic, and I, I, I felt about, you know, talking about the old talent trees or something. It's mm -hmm. just super old video, then, you know, people liked it, so I said, okay, well, what else do I remember from back in the day? Weapon skills, let me talk about that, and it just kind of grew from there, really. There you go. Yeah, I think that's one thing, um, I, I think with your channel, with your YouTube channel, uh, and those of you guys who haven't already, you should definitely go subscribe to Matt Season's YouTube channel. Um, I, I think it kind of hits the broader like wow audience in terms of like you 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 have videos that are kind of more related to like current wow, and yeah. then you've kind of transitioned more and more into like the classic scene uh, as mm -hmm. time's gone on. But I think that's how a lot of people have felt about classic, right? You you have uh, you have a large 
number of people, a large population of people who uh, maybe they weren't always thinking about, oh, man, I can't wait to play Classic again, this, that, or whatever. They weren't playing on private servers, anything like that. But then as the Classic announcement has happened and kind of things have snowballed a little bit, picked up, we we saw the big hype on Twitch and on the beta. It wasn't even the real game, and it was really exciting. Um, People seem to have been more and more excited about Classic, or they're they're more and more into it, or uh, even people who are kind of getting back into gaming even. I know there's plenty of people, I hear about it all the time, people who just like haven't played games in a while and then they're getting back because of been a little while. And uh, mm-hmm. I mean, that's what happened to me. Like I, I spent like two years and I didn't even play games or anything because I was, I was like working and I was like being a normal person. And then uh, and then I started playing on a private server and then uh, my brain went haywire. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of how it went for me anyway. Yeah, it, it was as fun that used the word throwback. Yeah, I think your videos, like, I, for me, the appeal of them, they're very, like, welcoming and endearing and, like, throwback and sort of nostalgia and reminisce reminisce if that's a word. <laughs> I think, I think, in, like, on, honestly, the three of us, myself, I speak for myself, probably guilty of this to a certain extent, a lot of classic content or vanilla content can come off as sort of elitist or exclusionary in a lot of ways. And mm-hmm. your content is not like that at all. Like, it's it's very palatable to everyone that wants to play the game classical at, at any level i think mm-hmm. yeah well, well again a uh, big reason for that is just simply like i can't really be elitist because again like I, I don't really play private servers so again a lot of my knowledge is just memories right so like i can't really say i'm like good at the game to really warrant being elitist at all so maybe that's where the appeal comes from like most of my guides are like for beginners right mm-hmm. because that's that's what i know mostly like my class picking guides is very very based towards beginners professions just the basic stuff i tend to try not to get into the advanced stuff because it's just simply i don't know too much about it but uh yeah it's it's just from experience personally is where all that comes from or lack thereof i guess <laughs> mm-hmm. i mean honestly like like even just going through your content right now like i've got your youtube page open. I feel like the thing that you do so well, like one of the reasons why I just, I keep coming back to your videos over and over again is like the stories you tell and the memories you recall, they always like, like they always cause me to recall like another memory of like something similar at the time. Like it feels like whenever I watch your videos, it's like story time with mad season. And like, it's always (laughs) like, it always feels like just something from the past, some memory that I forgot 15 years ago, can't even recall it. Not even like for, you know, you just you just don't remember, and then all of a sudden, oh yeah, dude, you'll you'll bring something up like, you know, the AQ gates and and, and the three different gems that you had to get the, the three colored crystals. And you're like, oh mm-hmm. my god, yeah, like it's really really cool. Yeah, and again, thank you for the, it's it's you guys uh humbled me here. I I appreciate it. It's I'm glad they hit the mark certainly. Yeah, for sure. So, here here's the thing, Matt. Season, hey, did you did you put out that video you talked about yet? What your plans are for Classic? Uh, not yet. <clears throat> I was going to kind of save that uh, maybe like right before release, just in case, you know, it, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to really put that out too soon, maybe, okay. just depending on uh, everyone's plans and stuff. But um, uh, I guess I really haven't decided on that yet. Maybe a couple weeks. Okay. Well, well, I think here we could give a, we'd give them a little bit of a sneak peek. And Yeah, uh, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I, we're also going to treat this classic cast as a uh, pseudo interview for uh, Mad Season joining my guild. He's going to play a warrior, so uh, you're going to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're going to play a warrior, right? Do you want a tank or do you want a DPS? Oh come on, man! <laughs> what, what does any warrior in classic want to do? It's all heal. DPS. They all want to heal and reroll power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring my band aids. I'm down yeah. for that. <laughs> Okay, so so you're gonna play a Fury Warrior Classic. What what have you done? Uh, what was your like experience in actual vanilla? You said you played a Rep Paladin for a little bit, then you rerolled Rogue. Like how how far did you get? Uh, my guild was pretty hardcore back then. We were on Cadgar Alliance side, which is kind of pathetic in terms of raid progression. So I don't want to like say this is bragging at all because mm-hmm. oh, we yeah. were like we're the best of the worst, pretty much, right? Okay. But we we're uh, number two Alliance guild for most of our time. Oh, really? And we got through all of Molten Core, of course, uh, Anixia, Blackwing Lair, all the 20-man raids, AQ-20, ZG. And AQ-40 would have been like the first raid that we didn't full clear. We got everything but Cthune mm-hmm. and everything but the optionals. Right. And then for next Ramus, we got all the Spider Wing, which was like the easy swing back then. And I, I, I say like one boss in each of the other wings. My friends and, and old raid mates 
say that we've got more than that, but I don't know. I personally don't remember. I think we just got one in all the other wings. So maybe like 30% of next Ramus. So it was, it was fairly far, but not, you know, complete by any means. Um, that's for PVE. Uh, as far as PVP is concerned, I got rank 10. I'm 99% sure, which was enough for the blue set. So I, I mean, I basically had no life. I yeah. was raiding five hours a day and PVPing as well, which was, you know, but you know, some things never change, I guess. Yeah, that's how it goes. So, are you, do you mind me asking, how old are you? I'm um, 29 right yeah. now. So, so you I, were, I you was, were like basically like beginning of high school then, basically. Yeah, like mid teens around when Classic came out. Mm hmm. It's kind of like the peak. I think that's like the peak age for like you. You still have your like young like reaction time, and then you you're like you don't have any like real mm -hmm. responsibilities either. But you still have school. But other than that, it's just like yeah, just play mm -hmm. games, you know. Do you uh, another another? Do you mind me asking question? Do you mind telling? Do you make classic content full time, or do you have a, a another job that you? I actually started uh, full time. Uh, about a month before I got into the beta. Uh, up until then, it was all just Congratulations. Happy. Wow. That's oh, really? awesome, man. No, thank you. Hey, it was just, you know, just uh, a circumstantial thing. I always kind of wanted to try it, and I, I found myself out of a job. So I tried it from then, and it's been going pretty well so far. I, I really can't complain. Yeah, that's awesome. Which means you're in the perfect position to know life classic. Wow. Yeah, yeah it, there you go. Maybe <laughs> I just planned it. <laughs> 20, 20 days, dude. 20 mm -hmm days yeah two zero it's gonna mm -hmm. be awesome really really exciting there's um, less uh, just real quick there's less time between now and classic launch than there was between now and the beta ending that's crazy mm -hmm. really yeah that's mm. that's pretty crazy to think about the closer we get the worse the wait is. yeah <laughs> well you know what why don't we go around and talk about what the four of us are doing to like prepare or plan for classic well what are you guys doing i think that's a good idea that's uh, so yeah, so here's my situation right now is, uh, I, uh, my, who was going to be my raid leader and main tank. Here's how I, here's how I run a guild, right? I, I, I like, like if I'm guild leader, I like to have somebody else to raid lead with me as opposed to just me being the only guy raid leading. I've done it both ways. And I think having a second guy, like, like a, an assistant to the regional manager to kind of help you out and mm -hmm. kind of keep the pace of the raid like okay hey, Why guys, not an assistant on? regional manager well it's he, assistant too it's just he does it's a different thing it's a totally different thing but oh, to yell yeah, at everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just a different thing um so you have this guy you have your raid leader and he kind of keeps the pace of the raid and it's like okay i'm pulling 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 whatever okay we get to a boss okay i, I might help explain it a little bit better or whatever um or, or if we make any certain decisions, like, okay, we're going to go with this strategy or that strategy or anything weird that comes up in Raid, like, I, I would uh, more so take part in that kind of decision making. Um, <clears throat> who I was going to have do that and main tank, I like it being main tank as well, or like our, our main DPS tank or TPS tank uh, as well. Uh, he had kind of some life stuff happen and he's not going to be able to play classic the way that he thought he was going to be able to play it. So we're going to have to get somebody else. Uh, so, so right now I'm, I'm, uh, kind of poking around and, and seeing who, uh, who I'm going to get to do that. And, uh, from there, it's just kind of like working through guild applications and stuff. I'm going to let, I'm going to let people know in my discord, Hey, I've looked at the applications. If I've contacted you, then we'll interview or, or talk to you about potentially like joining as like for, for like a main raider spot. As far as socials and stuff goes, that'll kind of come later on closer to release even, but uh, I kind of just want to focus on getting the main raiders in first. And even then, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I think you should over recruit because you don't know who's going to last. Right. Something might come up. Something might happen. And then you kind of when you have your first 40 people ready to go, that's that's your raid team. And uh, those are the guys who get like the first shot. And then you can kind of work from there. Uh, how do you guys feel about that? 100 percent on the over recruiting thing always over recruit there are people right now that are sitting in this stream watching that think they're going to play classic wow crazy but then something you know tomorrow they get a phone call with a big promotion or you know their girlfriend is pregnant or you know their boyfriend is pregnant in 2019 so like <laughs> you, you don't really you don't really know what's going to happen and um people always you know drop off between you know now and launch and then after launch you got a level to 60 and there's always something that comes up 
Um, maybe some, you know, a do, you think you do, but you don't situation happens with some people. So I definitely agree. Over recruit at least 20, 30 percent have some backups there for sure. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I'm going in with like maybe 120 people that think they want to be a trial for the main rate team. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk about like myself. We're doing, uh, I'm leading my own guild. So we're, go we're all going to be on the same server. We're going to be on a, on the streamer server. As Fawn tips out, Asmin, Mad Season will be there, I hope. Um, I mean, he'll be mm -hmm. in Esfon's guild. Mm -hmm. Soda, I think, is going to be there. So a lot of people might want to play on the server. A lot of people might want to completely avoid this server. I can't blame you either way. Um, but, uh, <laughs> My, my, I'm going to be leading a guild. We're going for a for a, oh Sony will be there. Yeah, absolutely. A lot a lot of people are going to be there. We're going for a 12 day Ragnaros. That's our plan, and so preparing for that. I was talking to Mad Season about this before we went live. Like uh, I'm making a bunch of videos to uh, drop once I'm leveling or, or like once Classic is out, so I can keep releasing videos as uh, as uh, as I'm gaming. I know Mad Season doing. This. I'm sure we're all doing the same thing. Oh yeah, I, I've mm -hmm. been in my editing dungeon. 10 to 12 hours a day just uh just working on videos occasionally leaving the house but uh speaking more of that guild stuff i like that's like one of the reasons why i just want to join a guild like people ask me all the time like will you make a guild and i'm just like hell no uh, that's leading a guild as you guys i know mm -hmm. i'm sure is just a ton of work just so much management and mm -hmm. you know getting into things like such as dkp loot council all the drama that goes with that so i i'm gonna leave that to you guys i'll just join your guild yeah there's a there's a lot there's a whole lot that goes into like guild management just creating a guild managing a guild a everything that goes into it is is way more than i think people expect initially uh i've always felt that way like i i like i, I led kind of like a small guild in burning crusade for a little bit whenever i was younger and then we merged into another guild and then i uh i ended up becoming guild leader of the guild i was in on private servers uh I was basically it was raid three, right? There was like some weird drama. We were part of another guild. We ended up breaking off from that guild, and then eventually I became raid, raid or guild leader of that guild that broke off. Um, and it was good, right? But there's some things, and, and the guild that I want to run is kind of going to be in the same vein. But there's some things that were kind of out of my control. Some things that were different because mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't leading the guild from the beginning. So it's like you have certain processes and certain like attitudes of. Uh, just these are this is how we do things. This is how this happens. This is how that happens. And people just kind of get used to it and they, they get into a rhythm. And then it gets really hard to change those habits whenever the guild has existed for, you know, three, four, five months before you become the guild leader. So, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how I feel about that. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of move uh, off of that. I'll move from there. I saw Rick in chat said the difficulty of leading a guild totally depends on your roster. hundred percent. Like if you have yeah. a bunch of annoying drama you loot crazy people like yeah NA? it becomes a lot more difficult <laughs> if you have an, an, an na guild <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a lot more fun right <laughs> I, I yeah I, I think like go go ahead go ahead tips well i was just gonna say like kind of my plan so if you mm -hmm. have something to add no no, no, no yeah go go ahead go go ahead and talk about a little bit more in a second but go ahead all right yeah um yeah i mean personally with uh with classic around the corner um so uh, we had we just had we just had a guild merger actually. Uh, my guild merged with Nick's guild, and uh, we're kind of we're kind of deciding to take things a little bit. Uh, we, we always planned on going a little bit, you know, hard, just spending a lot of time in the game. But we're gonna try to take things a little bit to the next level. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I, I completely agree with you, S fan, on on just like guild management taking so much time especially when you're streaming, when you're making videos and stuff like that, it can be mm -hmm. really, really hard to effectively lead a guild while at the same time fulfilling other obligations as well. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just like everything from like, you know, responsibilities, who's who's going to spec into improve battle shout, who's going to spec into improve renew, who's going to, you know, who's okay, Hydraxian, who's, which mages are going to get it there first, how quickly can we get the rep, like, if, if you really want to push it to the max level possible, you have to organize every little thing, okay, who's going to be the, you know, the, the moon polymorph mage, who's going to be the star polymorph mage, mm -hmm. stuff like that, so, um, so it, it definitely takes a lot of time, but, uh, but, but at the end of the day, I mean, in terms of plans, veg out, 24 hours a day seven days a week all day every day <laughs> like i've been i've been hitting the gym these past like this past month like crazy just so in classic launches i don't die of cardiac arrest that's like the, the, the literal sole purpose like like yeah uh, just just to be able to sit in this chair all day every day yeah yeah i've been working out again too recently 
Uh, I, I finally have kind of gotten over like my elbow pain and stuff like that, and I started working out again. But I, I'm, I feel like once classic comes out, like uh, we're just gonna lose it. <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know, it's something kind of kind of worried, but whatever. Um, yeah, I posted a picture to Twitter today just because I'm like, okay, this is like, I'm never gonna see this for a while again, so uh, might as well preserve, you know, the body. Right. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of interesting yeah. to see like how how much everybody's just gonna like degenerate until then. Um, yeah, I started my degeneration no process. Face cam. <laughs> yeah. I started degenerating two years ago because I knew I was just gonna lose it when Classic came out. So I was like, screw. <laughs> it's not worth it. Dude, old stay safe. Old stay safe. Pepe hands. Old stay safe. Gachi hyper actually. Um, <laughs> so I kind of want to talk about this a little bit just because we touched on it. Is like NA guilds versus EU guilds. How? I, I swear the the amount of like not not every I mean I, I ran an NA guild of course my guild not not everybody was was so bad in it but like you would just randomly have these people that would just like find ways to make a problem out of something that just is not even an issue complain about this piece Grandma or that Lamas. piece yeah and it's just like it, it would it would absolutely blow my mind and it's like dude it, it doesn't matter like everybody's gonna get like the pieces they need eventually you just show up to raid and do your job and like all that stuff right that's how that's how i would approach it and and well here's the thing especially in our guild and, and i'm gonna run my guild very similarly or build my guild very similarly raid roster very similarly where it's a very even split that is not at all the most efficient way to raid if i'm trying to speed run or, or do something a little bit more hardcore uh like stay safe would be doing right i i, I wouldn't try and basically have well i wouldn't have a rep paladin probably <laughs> that's that's for one uh which is gonna be me but uh but also from there like we had like we, we used like a rule of four like we typically had like four of everything so that way whenever something dropped it would go somewhere like a hardcore how many druids are you gonna run stay safe you know we're gonna have three actually we're gonna have a boomkin a feral and, a, and one resto okay so yeah like uh, boomkin. typically like in the yep. past like people Spell would crap. would go with like one one boomkin or sorry, one one druid, right? Um, and then what happens is like there's a there's druid gear that drops, and then you end up having way too much of it and it gets wasted. Uh, where for us, and then you might have like eight fury warriors or something. Where for us, we had like four fury warriors. So all of our warriors ended up getting stacked. Like we had a guy in our guild, his name was Duggar. Duggar, within eight days, got I believe, I, I believe he got onslaught girdle, Kroll Sharuk. And uh, Doom's Edge. He he got he got that all within eight days, which is like that's yeah, that's really big for a warrior. So um, so yeah, he. I mean, we had guys who they would join the guild and they would get totally stacked because in such a short amount of time, or sorry, because we had uh, so few people in each type of class that it was it'd be easy to gear out new people and stuff, uh, which. It worked out for me too, right? Because I, I play a rep paladin, and I would share a lot of loot with like uh, warriors and rogues and this and that. Um, so people like outside of the guild be like, "Oh, S fan just takes all the loot for himself." It's like, no, I don't. But like everybody's geared. It's just that that that's just how the guild works, right? Um, but yeah, I, I've heard with EU guilds, kind of back to the original point with EU guilds, especially like the hardcore guilds. For example, with like salad bakers, if Laddie is like, Laddie wants this, okay, Laddie Pryo, I'm, I'm taking it. Nobody complains. You know, like it's it's just like the EU guilds, like the guild leader says, hey, I want this. I'm the guild leader. Like I I, I do all this stuff. If you want something, he takes it and nobody complains. Right now, that, there wasn't a situation where that would happen so much in our guild. It would it'd be more so like, hey, we're going to give this to this guy or we're going to give it to that guy. And then somebody else. Oh, well, I, you know, I did this. Or this. I'm like, no, like you're going to get it eventually. Don't worry. Like we're, we're balancing it out. You're first on the list for that item. And this it's just like you're handling like preschoolers sometimes. And it blows my mind. So, yeah, it is what it is. It's just I just think it's yeah. very funny, like the NA versus EU attitude, on, on, at least on private servers, it was like that. I think you have to have like a zero tolerance uh, approach to stuff like that, because once you tolerate one person coming up to raid and like, especially if it's happening mid raid, if someone is mid raid in voice chat complaining about loot, about loot, like that just looks really bad. That opens the door for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, think so. Uh, I, I think EU, I don't know what it is, but I even noticed this at like the Method World first race. Like, if you guys were watching the streams, like, the way Limit uh, did their raids was so different from how, how like, Method did their raids. And, you know, both sides, you know, each way is, is like, there's no better way, right? They're, they're both work or whatever. Um, 
but but one thing i've noticed about eu specifically i think eu respect like hierarchy a lot more and when i talk to a lot of eu players like top eu players in like the vanilla scene like the way they talk about their officers or their guild leaders is like very much in like high regard and they're willing to like respect like their decisions and like work as a unit versus na it's just like memes all the time which again there's nothing wrong with it i mean it's, each side has their kind of their own approach but i think like culturally i think eu general generally speaking they're a little bit more um like disciplined mm. in that regard yeah yeah it's, yeah. A, it's a if i may it's it is totally like a cultural thing like here in america right we <laughs> we we're not afraid to speak our minds if we think something's wrong so even in pixels even we extend that even to the virtual world well, god did, damn it <laughs> yeah. i think like uh uh, yeah, I mean, with with like the method race, right? Kind of calling back on that. Um, I don't know. Just like I, I liked, I liked that. I felt like nobody cared. You know, like I mean, obviously they care, they care about one thing. What they care about, killing the boss. That's that's all they cared about, right? Killing the boss, getting world first, all that stuff, right? They don't care about. I'm in the raid. I'm not raid. I'm benched. Whatever. I I, I really like that. Progress first. Yeah, like I I really like that. Like kind of focusing on the progress and stuff like that. Hello? Hello, you guys? Hello? 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 Wait, can you guys hear me? Hello? Hey, hey. Yeah, anyway, like, American Raiders, they're a bunch of, like, freedom-loving rebels, and that's what it comes down to, you know? Like, it's exactly what Mad Season says. If they have a problem, they're going to speak their mind. They're going to throw that tea over the boat into the water, and that's, like, even if it means that that boat sinks or that all the tea goes away, like, you know, you got to do you gotta do what you believe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Okay, so we, we we talked a little bit about beta. You 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 played a warlock, but that was just kind of like a one-off thing. You're gonna play, uh, you're gonna play a warrior. We, uh, most people know by now. I mean, this might be the first time you're watching Classic Cast, uh, but but I think most people watching kind of know by now. I, I play Retribution Paladin. Tips also plays a warrior. Stay safe plays a warlock. Uh, mm. Oh wait, that's so interesting. So you've played every class that that we play. I just realized. You're talking that. to me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess um, warrior, warlock, pretty much, and, and paladin and is my first verse. character. So yeah, so, it, paladin had a very basic level. So I, I mean, I didn't get really too much into that. So, so and warlock hold up, too. Hold really. up. Don't, don't count yourself out, okay? Because the question I'm going to ask you is, which one of these three classes has the highest skill cap? Matt? Paladin. Oh, good answer. Don't coach yeah. him. Just let him speak here, okay? <laughs> Uh, in terms of PvE or PvP? Well, like, the answer is the same. Uh, okay. Uh, because you're asking the question, I'm going to say Warlock. What? How? Yeah, and this is why Mad Season is the most respected classic WoW content No, dude, you literally fear and he drain knows life. what he's talking it's about. It's AFK class. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anyway, no, yeah. Look, okay, we can move on. From no, this. hold on. Well, who every, presses more buttons? Every, Retribution Paladin or Warlock? Paladin. Seal of no. Command versus Shadow Bolt? No, it, no. Listen, I cast my blood. <laughs> like, Blessing of Might, Blessing of Wisdom, Blessing of... Mm. There's so many blessings. Uh, you know, there's uh, different seals, maybe. Seal of Wisdom, Seal of Light. Um, you have to have Charisma. So that's an intangible thing that you have to add into your gameplay having you have like four blessings and you guys even made an add-on to auto blessing people no like you it, couldn't, even, couldn't even handle that yeah but the, the add-on sucks I, I don't even use it oh okay yeah i don't even use it sometimes i use it for raids i use it i use it all the time uh <clears throat> so anyway uh look paladin i don't want to get into this now this is offensive to me <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah no so uh no it, it is again it's it's um uh, I, I think it's just interesting right whenever you look at like different perspectives of playing different classes and that like obviously uh i like i like paladin the most right i think it goes you know everybody knows that right you know it's like how do you know somebody plays a rep paladin don't worry they're like vegans they'll tell you so uh yeah it's, it's just it's just one of those things um <laughs> yeah I think kind of with you, you know, you're you're one of DPS. You did all this stuff. Whenever you played Paladin, did you play like pre? Like you played like was that that was your first character? So then you went from that to mm -hmm. Rogue, and yep. you said you were Ret. Did you go Ret in raids to get Blessing of Kings? And you just like you you, you Kings to everybody? Uh, you're giving me a bit too much credit. I had no idea what I was doing. I leveled as Holy until like level forty-five as one-handed Holy because I I was looking through the talent trees. 
and I saw um, Holy Shock at, at the, the 41 <laughs> point at level 10. It was like, wow, yeah. that does like 300 damage. That's so much damage. I'm going to go down there, you know, not realizing nice. that it's it's in, you know, 40, 30 levels, I guess. Nice. And then I, I only realized like mid 40s, I think that, wait a second, this isn't the damage tree. And I, I switched to Retribution and I, I got Seal of Command and I saw the light. Uh, uh, both, you know, literally and, and metaphorically, and uh, I didn't turn back from there. As far as my spec is concerned, I couldn't even tell you. I just, I just probably put points in randomly. I didn't look at any guides or anything. Yeah. Uh, again, I threw out like three heals per raid, per uh, boss fight, and then I, that was done. I was the out of combat rezzer. You guys remember that? Does oh that still yeah, happen? I did that. I, yeah, I did yeah. that too. I yep. remember that. No, yeah. well, not, not to immediately <laughs> put you down, but with my guild at least, the the most useless person was put as the auto combat resident. So well, that, that once was once again, me. once again, I, <laughs> I was that guy. Yes. <laughs> Amen. I remember, I remember doing, uh, this is whenever I was on Kel'Thuzad. I'm sorry. No, I was on Illidan before I transferred to Kel'Thuzad. And I, mm -hmm. I don't know what guild I was in at the time. I, I was kind of just doing this random run and cause I was a very social raider. Uh, I got, I guild hopped. I did this, I did that. I had friends in, in different guilds and stuff like that. Uh, but I remember I, w I was Rhett for Blessing of Kings, but I would, I, I, back before they reworked the Rhett, the Paladin talents, Deep Holy was a damage tree. It didn't make any sense. And the top of Holy was all the healing talents. So people could go Deep Rhett, hmm. get Kings, and then they would get all the best healing talents in the top of Rhett, or top of Holy. So that's what I did. I had Kings, and then I had, uh, like, Healing Light and all this stuff, like bonus Holy Light stuff. Uh, so I had all that. So I would... Kings everybody, out of combat res, and uh, I would just sit wearing like intellect gear and heal. So uh, it, it, it's funny like how, how different the game is now. Like whenever you look at especially the private server scene and uh, kind of like what people have done there, it's just very like min maxi and everybody's trying to play hardcore and not everybody, right? But but you have mm. like a, a select group of people that are like that. Back in the day, people like, there were so many people that were totally clueless, right? Um, and like out, out of combat resin got nerfed eventually, right? They made it to where whenever somebody pulled something, like everybody gets in combat. If somebody pulled a boss or whatever. Uh, well, that here's the thing. Like, it's funny. Well, yeah, I was Go gonna ahead. say it's funny you mentioned out of combat resin because when we killed, uh, it was an eight-hour Mordon run. We ended up killing Princess Theradros uh, on the beta. We were level forty. She's level fifty-one. It took us like killing her. The, it, that encounter itself took us like forty oh, minutes. Yeah. Um, we had a priest, DJ Penguin stand outside and out of combat res and he res two, he res people he res two people during that 40 minute engagement so, so you can yeah. still do it in classic i don't know it, i i wonder i remember them nerfing it but i wonder if they just nerfed it for raids instead of nerfing it for dungeons too mm, maybe i don't know maybe but you're absolutely right i can't hear you again i think you're i think you're i think stay safe your noise gate on discord is set like really low or really high nope we want to hear the breathing, dude. Yeah, we don't hear anything. <sighs> oh, my bad. Uh, I was hitting tab instead of caps lock, which is my push to talk. Uh, oh. Yeah. Anyway, my bad. But yeah, we we had a we had a out of combat res with DJ Penguin, and we it worked very well. But yeah, about the raid thing, like that's something we're not going to know until you try to do it in classic full release, right? Because you couldn't have tested that during the. Yeah, I mean, hopefully that's that's yeah. uh, his voice went out again. I mean, we, we can't hear you again. Stay safe. We was talking about raids, right? We had no raid testing happen uh, in, in yeah, the beta. Yeah. Dude, I, I would have liked to... Um, I mean, I don't know. They, they wouldn't do it because of hype stuff. They, they wouldn't want to get rid of hype or anything like that in, in, in terms of... Because that was one of the big concerns with the beta. Yeah. Is like, is the beta going to kill hype? I don't necessarily... Th like, the beta is going to have its own hype because it's so different than the actual release of the game. Um Maybe for some people who had a very mild interest in classic and, and maybe got rid of the hype for some of those guys. But generally speaking, I, I don't think it was that big of a deal. And, and the important thing is testing. I, I think they made so much progress with the beta going through and testing all the little things and, and getting so much mm -hmm. like good feedback. Yeah, I mean, there's there's an argument to be had there for sure, like in, in terms of hype, because because they didn't raid test or do anything. Everyone just got locked to 40 which that itself killed a lot of the hype, as you know, right? So the argument against that is if they tested the raids, then that would have destroyed hype as well because you're mm -hmm. showing off too much of the game. I'm kind of half and half on it. I, I do agree that, I mean, you know, the game is, you know, over a decade old. Everyone has seen it already, but there's just that aspect of 
you know, not including private servers, people being able to play it for the first time again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's many in chat right now. So I tend to agree with that, but I think just the way that the beta turned out, maybe it would have been better to increase the level cap and do raid testing because things just stagnated so much, right? Because we were at level 40 for, I think, like a month or so. I don't really remember. I, I do think that, so what happened was the beta came out and we were level 30 cap for three weeks, and then yeah. they bumped it up to 40. I was hoping that at the three week mark for level 40, they would give us, you know, two or three weeks of level 50. Um, Obviously, they chose not to do that, I think, because it would have overlapped with the with BFA patch 8.2 release. and They didn't want to have like that hype squelched a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think going to 50 would have been a really good idea. I think anything 50 plus like when you're level 60, which is, you know, where you're going to spend 90 percent of your classic gameplay time at, at 60. Um, everything 50 plus you're going to be doing very, very regularly. Right. So I think there's less of a stress to test that because like I think they can internally test that. I think uh, it's going to get like play tested as the game is going on i also think that like because that's where you're going to spend most of your time i think having players test that on the beta would have killed hype for that stuff as well i mm -hmm. think i think uh testing the raids would have been a bad move i think that really really would have killed hype and i i, I guess they said in that blue post that they're having internal raid testers take care of that so hopefully that's true mm -hmm. yeah i mean i've got to like i've got to agree with with most of what stacy have just said but to be honest, like I've been thinking about it the past couple of days, I kind of like that they didn't go to 50 in the end. Like dirt, when it was out, I was like, dude, why don't they just raise the level cap? But now when you think about it, like had they raised it to 50, we would have done BRD. We would have done, um, uh, dude, hell, we probably would have would have progressed mostly through LBRS. I'm sure somebody would have killed final boss in LBRS. Like it would have basically all the dungeons in the game or, or close to all the dungeons in the game would have been either cleared or partially cleared. And that would have just been like, you know, again, it would detract from the hype. Like, I don't know how you guys feel, but I'm freaking hyped right now. Like last night we were practicing like for like eight, nine hours, dude, like I was convulsing with how hyped I am. And like, I can't even sit here. Like I, I want to, I just want to freaking get up. I'm so restless right now just because <laughs> I can't handle it. You know, like I'm so freaking hyped. And I, I feel like the way they did the beta, the fact that we're still hyped is a testament to like, you know, beta being successful overall, I think. Like, I think any more than what they did, even though at the time I was like, why don't they raise the level cap? Any more than what they did would have been a little bit too much. Um, I, I think capping at a 40 was, was just fine. Dude, you want to know how pathetic I am with the hype right now? I have my own private server where that I use for footage that only I can connect to. I was doing drills last night of creating my character as fast as possible for, for the name reservations. It's like our, <laughs> nice. our hair, hair, skin color. Okay. <laughs> got, got <laughs> yeah, go. okay. Nice. I can get that in under 15 seconds that time. Uh, uh, <laughs> I did that a little bit on the beta. <laughs> hey, man. Because see, my, be my, my character has a look. Like, it, it's com the complete and total character immersion. Like, how are you supposed to be good at the game if you don't look like a character? Yeah, exactly. That's how it works. Like, I, I don't even understand. Like, obviously, like, I, I look I, like my character looks like me. Stasif's character looks like him. Like, it's it just it goes mm -hmm. without saying. Like, everybody knows, you know, that is how you become good. You know at the what? Game. It's funny you say that, dude. Today, I set a sub goal before classic comes out. I said, if we hit the sub goal, I will dye my hair pink for total character immersion. There you go. So yeah. maybe in total. That's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I think it would look good. I think pink hair would look good on you, to be honest. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I just want to clarify. Part of the deal was that I wouldn't wear a hat one to sixty. Also, so you would yeah. you would be able to. Mm. Now, what about the lady parts? <laughs> he's talking about. He's, uh, okay. he's talking, he's okay, talking about dude, the pigtails. He's talking about the yeah. pigtails. That's what he's talking. <laughs> about. Just the pink hair. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Now you know what's funny. Stay safe. Came and visited Austin. Uh, well, actually, this is before I lived down here. So, so he stayed there, came and visited Texas. We drove down to Austin. Uh, this was last year sometime. And we bought a wig. We were at the, the wig store, the, the costume. I don't know what it is. Costume shop. And there was literally a pink. Do you have it on you, Stay Safe? It's downstairs. I'm not going to get it now. Why is it, why is it, it. Why is it not at your desk? I haven't worn that in a very long time. I'm saving it for a special <laughs> moment. But, yeah, I bought, I bought a pink pigtail uh uh yeah pink pink yeah, yeah. so it, w it was really funny because we saw the thing and we we're like dude this looks literally just like stay safe's character's hair so uh yeah we uh er, we we convinced stay safe to buy it he did and it was the best purchase of your life you said best investment uh, 
give or take. Yeah, it was sixty dollars. It was it was a a way to spend sixty dollars. <laughs> yeah, so uh, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, <clears throat> was there anything, Matt, season that you were particularly surprised by, whenever? Uh, like just from your beta experience, was there anything that just totally just threw you for a loop, just out of left field? You're like, I, I I didn't expect this, or I didn't I didn't know about this, or something like that. Um, inside of the game, I can't really say too much uh, that really like threw me for a loop. Um, outside of the game, like as far as my streams were concerned, I hadn't imagined the turnout that I got. And shout outs mm -hmm. to anyone in chat who 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 checked it out, but. I mean, I never streamed for like, you know, uh, Jesus, like five years. And then I, I, I got into the beta, then it was really big turnouts for me. Um, so very appreciative for that. But uh, in game, though, hmm, I think the events, I didn't expect that many events to go on and in, in, in how successful they were mm. in, a, uh, in such a low level beta, like the, the dueling turn. I didn't I didn't realize how much I didn't. OK, I think that's something I didn't realize how much I'd enjoy the level 40 meta. Right. Yeah. Uh, as far as PvP is concerned and, and all that stuff. So uh, I guess that surprised me quite a bit. And, you know, the dueling tournaments by Tips Out and, and, and s -Fand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's been, it was it was really, really cool to to kind of see how everybody was so excited for the tournaments and stuff like that. I we, We've talked Dude, about this. tournaments were good. They, they, I, I was, they're, they're super entertaining. Like, seriously, hats off to you. Like, uh, I, I was glued to my computer. I didn't yeah, even masturbate that day. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I, I, oh, yeah. I, we, we've said this. We've said this multiple times, either on our own streams or I, I think we've said this on Classicast before, but the concept of tournament realms and stuff. I, I really, really hope Blizzard considers making like tournament realms and stuff, but I, I don't think they should mm -hmm. always be open necessarily like maybe I, I don't I haven't really fully thought it out but I think having a place for us to be able to like conduct tournaments and stuff like that where people can go and uh like like host a dueling tournament or something any sort of community driven event it doesn't have to be streamers like that's the thing like it's yeah. uh any you can have people in the community and, and have like a community driven event or something like that hey we're gonna go into the dueling server and you can pick from these items from you know phase three or whatever like it, it, it doesn't um, I guess it does matter, right? But it's it's not to that point yet on like what the specific rules and this and that are. Yeah. But just having a tournament server, I, I think would be so good. I think it'd be so fun. I think it'd be fun for a community. I think it'd be fun for, um, even if it's open just a little bit at a time, I think it'd be fun for stream yeah. stuff too. I, I think like the way to do it, if they were going to do it, would be to offer a tournament realm for like two or three weeks, maybe two weeks at the very end of each phase. Yeah. So you, you have like six phases of tournament realms. Uh, and it's limited time. I think it's scarcity yeah. makes it more desirable. I think that'd be the way. Yeah. No changes. Well, it's not yeah, even. Dude, it, well, it's, like that, I, 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 no, 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 it, no, no, no. Well, no, well, just just to, just to talk about that. That's not even. First off, it's not even related to like. Ha, it has nothing to do with like the the no changes sort of thing, right? And we've already talked about. We, we've talked about like the no changes thing. It's it's a lot of it is very memey, right? But mm -hmm. there's already a number of things that have happened right like there there's your you have patch 1.12 everything character balance itemization uh all the all the class updates everything like that is in and then there what's happening is like let's say you're in phase one you're getting the 1.12 version the phase six version of phase one content in phase one so this means like everything's post nerf and this and that and and who knows I, I've well, been kind of like here's the thing I, I don't even think you have to make that comparison in order to advocate tournament realms the thing with the tournament realms they have no impact at all on the live game whatsoever they're there for two weeks oh yeah it's yeah, a yeah. secondary thing and the point is it's a way that the community can get together and have cool everyone says community 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 this is a way the community not streamers but oh, the streamers and and just random community members. They can have community events with prize pools and get-togethers. You can play with people in, on different realms. It'd be a, it, it would be a phenomenal community thing. Absolutely. Right. Now, I, what I was talking about more so is is like another thing, not necessarily just about the tournament realms. I'm talking more so about like uh, I, I kind of feel like a crazy old man, like like Y2K kind of crazy old man whenever I talk about this. Because uh, But I acknowledge that it might end up not being that bad. It might not end up being that big of a deal. But whenever you're giving... Like you're you're basically your characters, player effectiveness, 
increased, boss strength is reduced in phase one based on like compared to like what patch 1.2 would have been back in the day. Mm. So, and that's, that's just purely from game factors. That's not, has nothing to do with uh, players are better. Now everybody has better internet. Everybody has better computers. Uh, the client runs better, has nothing to do with that. Right. But what I'm saying is that's, that's just how the game is now based on how, how like the design decisions that they've decided to make uh, getting to this point. So that, like, like that's, that's one of the things I'm concerned about. Again, they, they have internal testing, all this stuff. Hopefully it ends up not being that bad. And I'm, and I'm, I don't know. That's so just how you're, I feel you're talking it. specifically about having one to 12 talents in phase one, right? Well, yeah, kind of, but, but it's, it's more so everything, right? The itemization, everything. I don't think just one thing is, is that big of a deal, but I think the combination of everything, it's, it's a little bit concerning to me if you have post nerf bosses and buffed players. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I mean, like speaking, speaking, obviously there's itemization is just, but speaking to the 112 talent trees, I mean, like some, some classes saw talent tree nerfs, some classes saw talent tree buffs. No one knows, like literally no one knows unless you're blizzard and can do damage and healing and TPS testing <coughs> with 1.1 trees versus 112 trees. No one knows the extent to which 112 trees makes content easier or harder. No one knows. So it's, it's total yeah. speculation. It's it's a hundred percent pure speculation. I, I'm just concerned that uh, that it might be a little bit too easy. Or uh, and, and here's the thing: it's not going to make a difference for the one for the one percent, right? It's it's not going to make a difference for the one percent. What it is going to make a difference for potentially, if it works out the way that that I'm I'm personally worried about, is that big chunk of like the the middle like typical player base, because if it's the the one percent is going to clear the raids the first day anyway. They're going to go in there. They're going to be hundred percent prepared, speed run whatever that type of guild. They're going to be just fine regardless. Now the typical guild, if it's if the content is too easy for them, and I don't think it's too easy inherently. I think what might make it too easy is the fact that all the players are stronger now based on the design decisions that they've made, and the raids are weaker based on the design decisions that they've made, right? This again, just speculation. That is just what I'm worried about. That the typical player base is going to find it too easy. It's not going to. You're not really going to feel uh, as much of a challenge and and having to overcome and actually work for everything that you would normally. So um, yeah, Mad Season, you uh, you got through at least a couple of bosses and knacks back in the day. Mm -hmm. Can you recall? I know it's been a long time, but can you recall like the difficulty and like in terms of the challenge back then? Did did you guys have like overwhelming difficulty? Like, were they overwhelming mm. challenges, especially compared to retail out today? You played WAD, you played some of the later expansions. How how do you feel about difficulty then versus difficulty now? Well, like you said, it has been quite a while for me. And uh, as far as the current game is concerned, the most I'll do is like heroic, which I think is isn't too bad. I think real, you know, mythic is where the real challenge lies. But uh, talking about classic, it was extremely difficult. Not just because the bosses were difficult in Nexramus. Um, it's just we always, you know, it was during a period where the Burning Crusade was releasing. There's members cycling in and out. We had to re-gear everyone over and over and over again. We never had like a dedicated roster. People were getting burnt out. They're getting frustrated. So I think, you know, just I think we also have to take a look, uh, not just like, you know, boss health, boss armor, difficulty, talents and that. I think it's also important to look at, you know, just external stuff such as guilds imploding on themselves. Um, but going past that, uh, next Ramus was tough. It broke a lot of us, certainly. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of people who were raiding since um, when I joined the guild, which would have been probably around mid two thousand and five, stopped at next Ramus because you know we're in AQ forty. We we brick walled at Cthune. We had months and months of trying him, couldn't beat him. Went to next Ramus where we get like you know three bosses, spider wing, and maybe one of each of the other ones. Um, it was extremely difficult for my guild. Again, I was on Cadgar. We weren't really the best of the best. I'd say, like, by today's standards, we would be, you know, you said earlier, like a hardcore guild and like a, an average guild, right? I'd say we'd probably be an average guild these days. Um, we had some people who were pretty good back then, but, you know, by today's standards, we're probably pretty average. Uh, yeah, to answer your question, though, compared to the current game, eh it's it's kind of tough for me because i don't do the hardest difficulty in the current game and it has been 12 years but 
I I would say I had a tougher time with Next Ramus personally. And not just um you know, straight up boss difficulty as well, but things you wouldn't expect. Uh when Next Ramus first released there were plenty of bugs. And a lot of people forget about this. Um one bug in particular was with the uh, Anubarak, or is it Anubrakan in the spider wing? I forget. Uh, Anubrakan. I always get him confused, too. I think it's Anubrakan. Okay. Well, he had an issue. He would knock... It, uh, hopefully this isn't getting too off topic, but it involves urine, and it's a funny story, so I want to talk about it. <laughs> Please do. He would, knock, he would knock tanks up into the air uh, as part of his mechanics, then you tank swap at that point. What would typically happen is he would evade, because he would be locked to the first tank, he can't attack him, and he evades back to full health. There was one time where we fought that boss. It, it was like, I'm not sure what his enrage timer is, but it felt like forever. One of our healers urinated himself because huh. it just went on forever and forever. <laughs> and, but we got the kill, so it wasn't for nothing. So as far as difficulty is concerned, it was very difficult in more ways than one. He had to buy a new pair of pants. And I, I'm not making that up, too. A lot of people think I'm making that up. It's absolutely true. It was hardcore, man. Dude, that's amazing. Anything for the purples. Dude, I... Uh, okay, I I don't think it's crazy to if you raided in in World of Warcraft at some point in time, if you had a bottle next to your computer, you know, just in case you couldn't <laughs> AFK. Uh, I I don't Amen. I don't think it's insane. Like I, I don't know. I yeah, one time diapers, <laughs> bottles, whatever you can do. I was at my, uh, I, I went back to visit my parents' house and I was looking through my old stuff uh, and I was, I was looking at like Pokemon cards, Dragon Ball Z cards, and, and I actually found a box. You know what? Actually, I'm, I'm not going to tell the rest of the story. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> moving on. Yeah, moving on. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, it's fine. Uh, yeah, moving on. Um, so uh, in a little bit, guys, real quick, if you haven't already. If you uh, if you haven't already, please go ahead and follow Tips Out Baby, Stay Safe TV. Go follow their Twitch channels. Of course, follow Mad Season as well, Mad Season Show, uh, and check out their YouTube channels as well, Twitter, all that stuff. Everything is there on the uh, on the screen. Um, so make sure you guys do that if you haven't already. And uh, <laughs> uh, we we do want to do a little bit of Q and A soon too. So uh, in, in a little bit, we'll go on to Q and A and. Uh, in Q&A, we'll, we'll start with Twitter, right? So if you guys want to tweet at us, hashtag Classic Cast. We'll look at um, we'll look at we'll, we'll look at some questions on Twitter, and we might take some questions from chat as well. So um, so yeah, right. we'll, we'll do that in a little bit. Not not quite yet. Now, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about, and, and this, this is a little bit early, and I don't want to get too much into this discussion, but I feel like people are already talking about. I feel like people are already talking about what's going to happen after Classic and oh yeah, Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King. Did you mm -hmm. have a, a favorite period of time in the game that wasn't Classic, or or was Classic your favorite period of time? Uh, I just told Stay Safe this earlier, actually, before we started the stream, but Classic was my favorite. My favorite expansion was Wrath of the Lich King. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily for, like, uh, if you're wondering why, it's not really for, like, the content, I guess. Uh, well, it is for the content, of course, but another big factor, factor again, is the, the community aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's one of the things that you just kind of slowly saw, like, move out of the game more and more. Uh, as time's did we on. get muted? No. Oh, did Mad Season disconnect? Mad Season, you there? Oh, I think he might have disconnect. It sounded like he stopped kind of abruptly. But, um, yeah, he might have, his internet might have gone out or something. <clears throat> well, it's okay. Uh, I mean, I'll go ahead and continue with what I was saying. Was um, cam's frozen? No, camera's not frozen. Uh, wait, did I disconnect? Test. Did Discord die? I think Discord disconnected. I think Discord went out. Let's try this one more time. Oh. Uh. Testing, testing. Here, let me let me change the server real quick. Uh, Are we good? Can you hear me? Here, one second. Do we get Thanos? Testing. Okay, yes. we're good. We're good. We're good. Can we're back. Me? No, no, we're back. I, I think I think the we were using U.S. South server, and sometimes U.S. South. Weird, I, yeah. 
I could hear you guys, but I couldn't talk. I guess it was weird. Yeah, that, was, that was strange. Um, now we're using Western Europe server. Works well. Yeah, now we're using Western Europe. So Western Europe server works well, and U.S. South does not for some reason. See, this is what I'm saying, dude. NA Discord servers are just, I don't know what the deal is. But, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyway, continuing on. Uh, I, I definitely think that the community aspect of the game uh, was, t it definitely took a hit whenever you went on from, from the original game. Burning Crusade, Wrath, mm -hmm. and so on. That that's how I felt personally. Yep. In terms of not only there being systems and things in the game that naturally kept you engaged with other players that, that you were already like familiar with, but also putting you in situations where you had to meet new people, where you had to make new friends and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think stuff like LFR and, and Dungeon Finder and these things, they, they don't really do you any good. Uh, and one of the I just do this blows my mind to the the greatest extent like i i have had streams where i have like people are, oh like like uh, siege of Baralis plus 10 is like a meme on my channel because because on bfa launch i i, I did a, it literally took me like three hours to kill the last boss of siege of Baralis plus 10 because <laughs> somebody got mad because we wiped on the first attempt and left the raid or left the group right and i was like no, we are we are gonna four man this. We are not gonna give up no matter what. And what, what happened at the time? Because it was the expansion was brand new. If you made any single mistake, basically the group. If any one of the four people left in the group made a mistake, they died. And if they die, then you're three manning it, and you just you can't do it, right? So we did it over and over again. And I was like, I I I'm not gonna give up on this. This is like so dumb. I I like maybe it was me being a little bit stubborn. And just disliking this whole like instant gratification. If I don't get something my way right away, then then I'm not gonna deal with it. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna kick somebody out of the group. I, I, I don't know. Have you guys experienced this in retail? Wow, like where it's just like people like they they're they're so quick to get rid of somebody because they can just get somebody at yeah. the drop of a hat, and it's so annoying. Like I, I think it's so inherently wrong. Whereas in classic Burning Crusade, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, it was difficult. It took some time to get a new person. So you didn't want to get rid of that person because it's like, dude, if we if we get rid of this guy, it's going to be so hard to replace him. We got to go back to town. We got to go to trade chat, whatever. Uh, you, on private servers, we had slash join world. We were in world chat. That's, I mean, I'm sure that's still going to happen in classic. But regardless, like that person, if even if even if you're in world chat, that person has to come to the group. If you don't have a if you don't have a warlock, you can't summon him. It's a whole list of things that you have to deal with that. In retail, wow, it's just just like that. It, it's it, and I don't know if it's like a social, like we live in 2019, everybody's swiping right and left on their dating apps. If it's like the same sort of mentality, I don't know. I sound, I, I'm a boomer. I sound like crazy old man right now, but it, it's one of those things. Howdy, partner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, howdy, partner. But it, it just sounds like one of those things that, uh, it just seems like one of those things that, that the game really, really lost over the years. And that's what I'm excited to see again. People learn to overcome adversity, work together, make friends. Like some of the best relationships I've made have been forged through adversity, whether it's in game or in real life. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that like human behavior has changed in the last 15 years. I don't think that's it at all. I think it's just that the way that the game has incentivized and rewarded interaction and teamwork has changed, right? So, you know, in BFA, you spent three hours with four, three other people who you probably know to this day, like you still probably remember their names because you struggled with them for three or four hours. Right. You really didn't get any benefit to doing that, right? In fact, the game, prob the game, when you think about it, would have rewarded you for leaving that and joining a different group, which is, which is the unfortunate reality. You're just incentivized differently. Yeah. Exactly. And, and this was one of the reasons why, like, like there, there was a point in retail WoW where things were actually going to go back in the vanilla direction. I don't know if you guys played like early Cataclysm, but early Cataclysm, those first two months was like, like in my opinion, it saved World of Warcraft for, for a tentative time period until they ultimately decided to backtrack and double down on their, uh, double down on the casualization. But like early Cataclysm, like the first week or even the first couple of days of Cataclysm launch, the heroics were so quote unquote mm -hmm. hard that the looking for dungeon tool even though it was already out in the game and people have been using it for like a year and during like icc days it, it 
nobody used it. It wasn't worth doing it because you would have to spend an hour queuing up and then you'd get into the dungeon group. And because the dungeons were tuned a little bit higher or much higher, I would say, than the Wrath Heroics, somebody would mess up and, you know, like you could get kicked or the group would just fall apart. So there was no reason to queue up whatsoever. You literally just made pre-made groups and it made the community on your servers so much stronger just for those first couple of months. But supposedly that ended up in subs, you know, going down or whatever. And by that point, people had gotten so used to the instant gratification and the wrath baby movement and stuff yeah. that, that Blizzard ended up reversing things. But like, it's a great example of if you change how the game rewards behavior, the player base will change too. And like right. literally overnight, like I don't remember queuing at all, at all in Cataclysm for dungeons. It was just always trade chat spam, always. Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny, like there was even one instance of that in, uh, in, in Wrath, at the end of Wrath, even with Dungeon Finder, there was one dungeon in Wrath that if you queued into this, uh, everyone left immediately. And it, it's not Oculus. Uh, actually, it was Halls of Reflection. Remember this, if you queued Halls oh. of Reflection in Dungeon Finder, the dungeon yeah. was so hard and annoying, people just left immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was so annoying. And then obviously with Caddy, you're totally right. But yeah, like it, it's a mix of this like Tinder style WoW where you just have like very fleeting, mm -hmm. low communication meetings with other players and also the content that you queue into being incredibly easy. Yeah, yeah it, it's, I mean, you guys hit it right on the head. It's, it's a combination of many things. It's a combination of just being able to cycle people in and out with the click of a button in terms of Dungeon Finder. And not only that, but no ramifications for, you know, doing it so quickly. Yeah. Uh, you know, with cross realm zoning and, and all this cross realm stuff, you know, you never see the same person twice, it seems. So mm -hmm. it's not like, okay, that guy acted like a dick. We're going to avoid him. I'm not going to group with him again, like you had with Classic, with, you know, no no group fight or no uh, cross realm zoning and whatnot, right? And, you know, it's just a combination of that and just the uh, content being, the base level content being easier in general with like dungeons and whatnot. Like dungeons are, you could face roll at this point. You could roll mm -hmm. your face on the keyboard and you would eventually defeat it. So if someone does mess up and it's really, really hard to mess up, you can rest assured that they're going to get kicked. They're probably going to be abused because again, there's really no ramifications for it in, in my opinion. And uh, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're totally right. I mean, let's say in Vanilla WoW, let's say you are you do a dungeon and like, you, you know, you spend a half hour trying to find people in trade chat to do Blackrock Depths and then you get in the dungeon group and you're a total asshole and you decide that you're <laughs> going to ninja pull the boss and then bubble hearth out, right? Those four other people in your group, they're going to hate you. Like they're going to remember your name. They're probably going to contact your GM and tell you, yo, uh, tell mm -hmm. the GM, yo, this guy was an asshole. They might even go in trade chat and say, yo, this guy's an asshole, don't group with this guy. They might even go in the forums and say, yo, this guy's an asshole, don't group with this guy. In BFA, if you behave in, the, in a similar way, in a dungeon finder or a group finder or a raid finder or whatever, like, you, you might get kicked out, you might get vote kicked, but you just queue another one. It literally has zero consequence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty annoying. And, and we could talk about this all day, right? I, I think this is one of those, uh, this is a boomer conversation. But <laughs> like, it's just like it's just one of those things that will, that'll it'll, it'll go on in, in circles. Day. Yeah, back in my day, I mean, I remember when World of Warcraft was hard. It's like, okay, dude, it's still hard. That's another thing that's really funny is like people people act like retail WoW. People act like retail WoW is is really easy, right? Or or I, mm -hmm. I and I don't think and I, I've said this so many times. Retail WoW mechanically is it's very difficult. Right at the, at the highest level, mm. right. The problem is, is that they have four different raid difficulties and stuff like that. So people go in and they feel like, oh, like this game is for casual. This game's easy now. It's like, well, no. Like you did it on LFR. You did it on normal, right? It's it, to me like, wow. Well, it it shouldn't be. It, it shouldn't be a game yeah. where you can go in and and yeah and, and basically like have these different difficulties. Uh, there's there's some mystique. To being able to complete the raids, it should be special. I mean, people still talk about how there were so few guilds that killed or that cleared Nax, and so few people that even went inside of Nax that it just ends up being this like totally crazy, mysterious place, right? It's like, oh, dude, Nax Raider, like Pog you, right? Like it's it's like, oh, that's amazing. So I don't know, and, and even then, like in the grand scheme of things, Nax wasn't harder back then than any in any raid right now. It's just that there's there's an added level of uh, like just value, I guess, to the raid. It makes it that much more special whenever you, not everybody can go in there and do it. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, it, it, I'll go ahead. Go ahead, man. No, 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 please go ahead, man. Well, it, it kind of takes you out of the world, right? It's in, in classic. Um, again, not to go like boomer mode here, but, mm -hmm. you know, Nexramus is Nexramus. You don't have Nexramus Telefar. You don't have Nexramus normal. You don't have Nexramus heroic and mythic. Um, mm -hmm. I guess you had, no, I guess Wrath didn't even have Nexramus heroic. Let's start with Trial of the Crusader, right? It, it really takes away, like, these raids are a big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Pre-Wrath of the Lich King, I guess. And to go in there and clear it was a big deal. And um, I think really, you know, it's not everyone needs to be raiding. You know, people who put in five hours a week and then they take, you know, four months to hit level 60 or whatever the cap is for the expansion. Like, they, right. I, don't, I don't think that really, like, everyone is entitled to raid, really. And I think, like, those people are perfectly fine without raiding. You mm -hmm. know, I, I think uh, Kevin Jordan has made this point quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to steal this from him. But, like, that weekend warrior is what he calls him, is perfectly content with not raiding. Yeah. And I think, like, a lot of these changes, like LFR, were made for those players in mind, right? It's not enough people are raiding. Let's get him in there. It's, it's you know, he only plays five, ten hours a week on the weekends. We need to get him to see this raid content. And I think it, it really kind of takes away from, mm -hmm. you know, the, the levels of difficulty that you can challenge yourself within the game. Mm -hmm. And I try not to sound like as, as elitist as I can because uh, I think it's, it's more than that, right? And yeah. again, as far as, like, having four difficulties is, is concerned, that's not even getting into, like, burnout in, in, with the current game with, like, Titan Forging and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. with Titan Forging, you really run these raids, like, you know, four times uh, if you're really hardcore. And maybe not LFR. Not sure about that these days, but um, yeah. it's 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 definitely an issue. And again, that's not to say that like the current game is easier. I mean, it, just step into mythic mode and tell me the current game is easier. Look at all these raid mechanics and tell me like what's more complex, Lucifer, <laughs> or you know the the Ashara in in mythic. Like, I mean, yeah. objectively looking at it, the current game They're I believe is harder fights, than classic. Man. Like they have a lot of similarities. <laughs> Yeah, I just remembered your tweet, Stay Safe. I, I love that tweet so much. It just and I laughed so hard when I saw it. The well, this isn't like Lucifer at all. I, I, I thought it was so funny. It's, just, it's a picture well, of Stay Safe, just like staring like blankly into space. Just like it looks like his entire life is shattered. It's so funny. This is whenever he's casting at Red Bull. He's casting the world in first race. It's like, I, I, well, this isn't anything like this for a moment. I, I laughed so hard. I, I love that. <clears throat> I mean, going off your point, Matt Season, like, mm -hmm. I, I think the problem with raiding, like, the way raiding's kind of been pushed as the forefront feature of World of Warcraft, I think the problem with raiding is raiding is not a sustainable end game. You know, it's not it's not sustainable game design. If your entire game is centered around raiding, it will eventually fail, especially if it's an MMORPG. And that's what we're seeing with World of Warcraft. Look at how many steps and how many attempts have been made to get away from raiding. Look at the the rise of Mythic Plus, mm, these island mm -hmm. expeditions, these new uh, world quest system, all that stuff. They're trying to get away from raiding because they realize that if raiding is the centerpiece of your game, people will max level, they'll get into the raid, and then they'll just be raid logging, you know, till eventually they get bored because they're not doing anything for the rest of the week. And, and that's really the problem with raiding. And th that's the great thing about mm -hmm. vanilla in my eyes is, like you said, the weekend warriors. You didn't have to raid back in original vanilla to enjoy the game. Just mm -hmm. leveling up gave you the same satisfaction of endgame progression because you could continuously build your character slowly but surely over time. PvP was great. The honor system constantly gave you you know something to rank towards and stuff like that. You never had to raid to feel like, yeah, th this is the game. You know, the entire game is, is reserved in this section. And that was kind of how MMOs were before WoW to a certain extent. Obviously, EverQuest had raiding and other games had raiding, but the vast majority of MMOs were essentially pixelated lobbies where you could go out and do certain things here and there. But at the end of the day, it was really about the community creating their own experience. And the scripted mm. PVE content was just kind of that that extra, you know, a way to incentivize the community coming together, but not really more than that. Mm -hmm. Dude, I, I have a couple of thoughts with that, it, just to add on to that. Just, just you said, okay, raiding, PVP, dungeons. You, you forgot to mention fishing. And you probably think I'm joking here, but... There's a dude named Smooth McGroove. You guys may know his, like his acapellas from YouTube, but he, uh -huh. he also streams classic, and he, he's a great streamer. I watch him quite a bit. Uh, he's very, very passionate about uh, classic. I think he plays on private servers as well, or he, he has a background in that scene, and he's making a guild called Nat Pagel is My Dad. 
and it's solely based around <laughs> fishing. Every weekend they're going to go win the Stranglethorn Vale fishing tournament. They're going to have fishing-based events and fishing competitions that they make of their own. That's awesome. And I'm going to be joining it. So it's just 100% what you said is true. Doing very basic things in World of Warcraft, I mean, people can enjoy it, right? So is he, is he going to play on an RP server? doing that yep rp yep yep uh, just to uh avoid like you know you can't really do that in pvp right if you get stream sniped and stuff so speaking of which i so what what, was their reasoning for no rp pvp at launch was that there was no rp pvp at launch of retail vanilla is that what they said no no that was just that that was something they said, but the, the the big justification they gave was they they didn't see the demand for it in terms yeah. of like objectively going through like retail percentages. Like in retail, the percentage of people that play an RP PvP is so low relative to the overall population mm. that like they can't justify making an extra server. I'm not saying they shouldn't. They should make an RP uh, yeah, PvP server. Really I, I think a lot Just of people play at least you one. know what's funny. Yeah. You know what's funny. No one played PvP servers at all because they got rid of them. They just added warm up. <laughs> yeah, <true>. retail. <laughs> it's it's a different animal. Like I, I just just one. Just make one RP PvP server because like th- there's Dude, people RPC that in classic is way I believe is way uh, more active in, in classic yeah. than it is in current from what I understand. Well, now, now I do think retail WoW for role play purposes. I do think there's a lot of stuff in the game that kind of helps it, like with yeah, all the transmog. toys and transmog and all the weird stuff, right? Uh, all, all the all the little extra extracurricular type stuff. But yeah. like, there's like th- th- there's a solid community of people that want to role play, but they also want to play on a PvP server. And you can argue that playing on a PvP server is more RP. Than on a PVE server, right? Because like you see somebody else, you can go kill them, whatever, right? Yeah. I just I wish they would just make one. I, I don't I don't see how it would be that big of a deal. I, I don't I don't see what it would take away from everyone else for them to just make one RP PvP server. I, I just mean, saw an interesting question. There too, right? In yeah, go ahead. BFA, in BFA and Legion, um, if you play on an RP server, there is no sharding or cross server gameplay. Uh, whereas on any other server, you have random people appearing in and out from different servers, et cetera, that's in your server cluster. I wonder, and we haven't heard about this, I wonder if on the, there's obviously no PvP RP servers in Classic. I wish there were, but uh, the PvE RP servers, I wonder if they won't have layering. Hmm, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Yeah, that's a really I mean, good that would point. break RP, right? If you just see people like zoning in front of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course it would, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just uh, now I'm not. Uh, I used to think RP was dumb whenever I was younger, but as I've gotten older, I I, I think it's so funny. I I just I think I think good role play is like, I just think it's hilarious. Like I, I did GTRP for a while and it was a blast, and it was just all the ridiculous like little interactions <laughs> and stuff that people have. I don't know. I I, I think it's funny, but uh, I, and I and there's here's the thing. It's not even about me, right? And that's kind of the way that's that's the way that I, I try and look at things. I try and look at things objectively. There's a a, a community of people that love to role play, and, and I think having a, an, an RP PvP server for those people is important for classic. I, I mean, if worst comes to worst, I'm sure they'll they want to RP, they'll go play on the PVE server. But it would be much more ideal for them to go play on the PvP server. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, we saw the beta; everybody played PvP. I wouldn't be surprised if they make a PVE. Server, or sorry, a, a, an RP PVP server alongside an RP PVE server. My biggest concern would be that the PVE server would die. That that would be my biggest concern. Yeah, true. I mean, I I don't think there's any good reason to not have it. at least one PVP right. RP server. I think there is. I think there's definitely a demand for several of them. I really don't know. I mean, it's so easy for them to do, right? Like, why not just do it? Just do it for it. I I have no idea why they're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think if people make, uh, I don't know, the server names are coming up soon, so hopefully it's not too late. It might be too late, but they have been pretty good about listening to feedback. You know, mm-hmm. you had the whole regional thing with European servers. So I think if people make a big enough fuss about it, it's possible to still get it because they haven't announced the realm names, but I, I'm not sure. It's it's getting pretty close. So Yeah, I wonder if, yeah, I wonder if they're going to do it before or not, announce it before or not. Like if it's just going to be like, here it is. Go sign up, or if they're going to let you know beforehand. Very curious. The real question is, uh, 
in Classic, what will be the new, I see people talk about this in chat, what will be the new uh, Moonguard Goldshire server? There has to be one, right? There does have to be one. There does have to be <laughs> mm -hmm. one. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing some of the names. I'm, I'm very interested yeah. in seeing some of the names. Because I, I think what's going to happen is... Uh, I don't think they're going to – some people, oh, what if they name it after, you know, Nostalrius or something? I don't think they're going to do that. I I, I don't foresee that happening. But um, – Name it after streamers. Well, Reddit I, would I, explode. I, 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 no. I, I don't think they should do that either. But uh, I do think uh, – I, I think that at a certain point you kind of run out of things that are like cool to name your server after. Illidan, Kel'Thuzad, hmm. you know, Frostmourne, right? Like at a certain point, like you're you're gonna what, what are you gonna use old Blanche? Like I, I don't know, I don't know what you're gonna come <laughs> up with. Like more like Marshall Dugan. Like I, I don't know what they're gonna call the servers. You know, um, I, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting for me to see. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't even think of other uh, any other names. Well, here's a question for you: How many servers do you? Th I'm sure you guys get this question all the time. Like if you can put a number, how many servers do you think they would have? Interesting. Probably for North Tough America, one. if I just had to take a guess, considering they're doing layering, for launch, they'll probably have around 20 for NA. I would guess around the entirety of EU, like including all the different regions, probably around 15 to 20 as well. Um, if they if they have less than 20, I'd be, I'd be kind of... If they had less than 15 NA, I'd be pretty surprised. That's, yeah, that's I, the, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I think probably 20 per region, like 20 China, 20 EU less less for australia like 10 or maybe five for australia i don't know I def, definitely 20 or 25 yeah yeah i think um i think 20 is not a bad number per region at least for for like na and eu and then you'd have you'd have china and yeah i i think i, I think you guys and are I, giving good estimates i i just remembered we do have some sort of frame of reference because it was one of i think it was our interview s1 with them when we were down at the media summit down there three months ago or whatever, they said they didn't want to make the mistake of making too many servers like 30. And that's the number yeah. they give uh, as being too many as 30. So probably mm. they're thinking less. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and here's the idea. The idea behind layering is layering is like a dynamic server cluster, right? They think that people, and, and this is a very reasonable thought, I think. I think a lot of people think this. The hype of anything, Classic WoW, whatever, if something's hyped up, you will have this big influx of players at the very beginning, and then you're going to have a drop-off. So the concern is if they were to have actual server clusters, they would definitely have to merge, like, every server. That's that's mm. how they feel. Like, if you have, like, a 50% drop-off after, like, a month or something, uh, just people who made a character got to level 3 or 4, 10, whatever, and then decided, uh, whatever, they just kind of were getting a taste, and they decided Classic's not for them you're going to have such a big drop off in population for all these other servers that every server is going to feel dead. So with the layers, they have it. It's almost like a dynamic cluster where each layer is the size of a server. So if you have a layer or sorry, of an original vanilla server, and then by phase two, hmm. they can get rid of everything and hopefully it'll balance out. My concern is in phase two, I bet we're going to get big queues if they go with like a, a 3000 player cap. Like even if even if there's like a five thousand player can't. camp, even they if can't. they got it, yeah, yeah. Well, I think they even if they went up a little bit, there would it would be maybe good. It might be good, but it, it, there'd still be a queue, right? Um, now the hope would be that if you have this is from my perspective, the hope would be that if you have like a five thousand person server cap, um, it's not too. It doesn't make too big of an effect on the game, like respawn times and this and that being centered around like a server with 3,000 people and that having 5,000 people on the server at a time, it would just kind of naturally filter out and, and spread across the entire server as opposed to like with 3,000 people. So I don't know. Like I love, I'm, I'm going to be honest, back on private servers, I love the 10K cap. I loved it, but this is a, it's a different animal. Like I, I, um, hmm. I, I just think realistically, I think they might, if they increase it, they wouldn't increase it by very much. Well, yeah, and I mean, it, like, you need to do something to accommodate that many players, right? Vanilla WoW mm -hmm. obviously only had two and a half or 3,000 players. I think that we've heard different things from 
uh, not Kevin Jordan, John Stats and Mark Kern about why they only had two and a half or three K. Mm-hmm. I think one of them said it was hardware. One of them said it was gameplay design decision. Mm-hmm. Not really sure. Either way, that's what the game was designed around was that many people. So if you have 10,000 people or 15,000 people like on some private servers, they've obviously had to do things to accommodate those players. The primary things being, I think on the Starius, they dropped down uh, draw distance on different servers. They've, uh, they've increased dynamic respawns and mm-hmm. things like this. So like you, you have to do something if you want to have that many people and classic wow is saying, okay, our approach is layering. So you're right. Like, I think honestly, I'm more concerned about the phase one transition into phase two than I am launch day. Cause I, I think, you know, you, you're going to have all these people that are accommodated on a giant server through phase one with layering. And who knows, like, who knows, you might have 40,000 people online at once with layers on one server. Like we just have no idea. 30,000, 25,000, it's going to be a big number, right? Um, especially those because like phase two is the launch of world bosses which is going to be a hype freaking event like everyone is going to want to participate in that first world boss kill just because it's going to be so insane there's going to be literally thousands of people going after the same boss in the same zone and if layering is off dude that's going to be that's dude i don't even i don't even know that's going to be like if if the server cap is 10,000 people, like 8,000, 9,000 are going to be in that zone, and then 1,000 are going to be whatever, doing their own thing. But it's going to be, like, completely packed. Yeah. Like, never been mm-hmm. done before in the history of WoW, period. Like, some EVE Online shit, you know what I mean? Like, excuse my friends, but, like, it's going to be crazy. Who is the uh, yeah. boss? What was the green dragon that, like, spawned mushrooms when someone died? That one's going to be interesting. There's, like, you uh, know, 500 people on top of it. Uh, Emerus. Emerus, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be fun. Yeah, I mean, Tips is right. Like this, uh, this tool that they've been using to accommodate all these players, you know, layering is now taken away, and at the same time, they're introducing content that incentivizes players to log in and kill stuff. Right, so it's going to be a big problem. Like I said, my big concern with Classic WoW right now is not launch. Like I am concerned about launch, but my bigger concern is when Phase Two comes out. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I think... still freaking hyped, dude. I don't know, dude. I, I, I I'm freaking hyped. I, I got to stand up or something. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go make your character a bunch of times. Go practice. It helps. Yeah, 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 just go, just go practice. Um, pretty soon, guys. By the way, we are going to take a look at Twitter here in a second. Uh, hashtag Classicast, and uh, we'll we'll look at Twitter a little bit. We'll do a little bit of Q and A, and and we'll take some questions out of chat as well. Uh, if you guys have any questions for. Uh, any of us collective or uh, or any questions for mad season specifically i will take a look at that and uh we um we'll we'll do a little bit of q and a here to wrap it up uh do you guys have anything else you want to hit on before we go to q and a let's do a q and a man let's do it uh well. i think this is a good question to start us off this is from chins chins gaming he's a, he's actually a, a keltuzad native a fellow keltuzad native uh question for everyone how long do you think the phases will be well, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Um, I think that the original vanilla took about 24 to 25 months. It was like it was like 24 and a half months or something from November 23rd to I think it was December 5th was the 2.0 patch. So I don't think it would be crazy to, to see kind of like a two year ish cycle for vanilla. Wow. Uh, for for wow. Classic. Based off that and having six phases and when things happened originally, I think if it's like two and a half to three and a half months for phase two to come in with Dire Mall, I, I think that sounds about right. I think if you go another like three months for Blackwing Lair, I think that would sound about right. So you get Blackwing Lair, you get phase three in uh, after like six months. In original vanilla, you got Blackwing Lair at the eight month mark. And then I think ZG Mm -hmm. came like a month or so after. Maybe it was like almost two months after. I I can't quite remember off the top of my head. But you could put the ZG phase with the Emerald Dragons like three months later again. And then you could have a Q like three or four months later. Right. And I think Vanilla WoW, the progression of Vanilla WoW, has some natural... uh, has like some natural like kind of down parts like right before the next patch comes out that's normal right if you're on the cutting edge of content that's that's a normal thing to experience it's like okay this is like a little bit of a a lull in the content because you've been grinding it and all that kind of stuff but i think for the typical player it's 
not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, I think if you have... <laughs> okay, everybody was lolling. At, uh, unbelievable. Okay, I was like, wait, what happened? What did I say? I'm not that funny. But uh, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, it threw me off. Uh, so yeah, I, I think going like basically like three, 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 and then maybe the third one is another three or four months, and then five or six, and then five or six uh, months for the last two, I, I think would not be crazy. Or the period of time for the last two, right? So like five or six months of AQ patch, and then five or six months of Nax patch, and then... Uh, and then hopefully a burning crusade. Hopefully phase two comes after BlizzCon. I do want to say that. Yeah, I think if we would it hold on. So August 27th. So let's say beginning of September, then beginning of September. So September, October, November is the third month. So on that timeline, the beginning of phase two would be like, middle of November or, or beginning of December or something. It will. Yeah. I, I would bet my life it will definitely come after. I think so. BlizzCon. The thing is, it's definitely going to be during December holiday season. Uh, so if you're taking time off for Christmas or want to go out of town to visit your relatives or do any do anything at all for Christmas, you're forfeiting uh, honor, <laughs> which yeah. is a big problem. Well, if, if you want to do mm. the honor grind, if, if you want to do the honor grind. Uh, and, and the honor grind without battlegrounds is oh this is a whole this is a whole subject to talk about another time probably, but uh, there there are some concerns about doing the honor grind without battlegrounds because back then, back in the day it wasn't going to be nearly as competitive as it might be in classic, um, so people are worried about like spawn camp not spawn camping but uh, camping like flight paths and stuff ganking like because uh, you start getting honor I think it's level forty eight when you start getting honor. So you can imagine, like, chill wind. There, there's going to be certain flight paths that people are just going to be sitting at and just, just camping in between queues. And uh, especially because you don't get ported back to town if you're in a pre-mate. Oh, well, this isn't going to be an issue in Phase 2 because there's no battlegrounds. But uh, yeah. it could be an issue in Phase 3 still. It'll still be an issue in Phase 3 because people aren't, weren't getting ported back to the capital cities on the beta. So, uh, so yeah. Is it 51 plus or 48 plus? Stay safe, do you know? Uh, what honor 48 plus okay that's that's what i thought somebody in chat said 51 um but yeah anyway that's that's like a whole nother thing but uh, go on go ahead and continue with uh you, you, um you were thinking phase two is going to be after blizzcon you're almost positive oh i i guess i'll give my timeline like mm -hmm. i think that phase one was mc and ani is going to be five months like i think a lot of people like myself included it's like uh five months of mc ani but most people are going to take two or three months to hit 60. They're going to be in progression guilds. They're going to be hard stuck on Gar, hard stuck on Regnos for several, I'm not kidding, for several weeks. I think you have to give those more casual players more time to actually like experience the game for the first time. I think most people playing Classic will be doing it for the first time. So let them and let them play the game. Uh, phase one, five months, I think that probably phase two, which is DM, Azure Ghost, Kazakh, and Honor, World PvP, probably a month and a half or two months. I saw someone say in chat that Blizzard will want to move on to, from phase two pretty quickly and add VGs because World mm -hmm. PvP is going to be wild. I can see that happening. So maybe a month or two months at most. Um, phase three, BWL and VGs, I think will probably be three months. And I, I think it's going to be that short because like ZG and B, BWL, it's sort of like in the same scope. So I think that phase three will be three months and phase four is maybe like another two or three months. And that's Zulgrub and uh, World Dragons. I think that Phase 5, which is AQ40 and AQ20, so you're getting two new raids, by the way, and, and a difficult raid at that, I think will probably be five or six months. And then, you know, Phase 6 is the last phase. That's next Ramus. I think will be five months. Um, mm -hmm. That's like 22 or 23 months total. I think it'll probably be around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say Phase 1, three months. Phase 2, two months. Phase 3, three months. Phase 4, two months. Phase five, six months. Phase six, six months. That's my guess. I'm more aligned with stay safe, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Taking leveling into consideration, I think phase one might last four or five, just to give people time to hit 60. And you have Molten Core and Anixia. That's two raids. Well, Anixia's a one boss raid, but still. Um, and phase two, considering it's just world bosses and the honor system, I think I say like maybe like a month, month and a half, two months at the very yeah. most. Phase three, uh, like the rest, I would say, I'd say phase three. Phase three has a lot of stuff. Like that's two battlegrounds in a Blackwing lair. It's a I'd lot. say like maybe, yeah, and Dark I think Moon like Fair. four months. Yeah, and Darkmoon Fair as well. Mm -hmm. And also, um, 
sorry, I keep interrupting you. Go ahead. I want to. I want to touch on phase three a little bit no. once you're done. Okay. Uh, phase four, CG. That's just twenty man, green dragons, Rathi. I'd say maybe like two or three months for that. Um, phase five, AQ. I'd say that's because that's AQ forty and AQ twenty and the war effort. I'd say like four months for that because doesn't. I'm not sure. Like uh, again, I don't play private servers. How long does the war effort typically take? Uh, in your guys' experience? Um, the fastest it's ever been done, the thing about private servers is like the war effort, typically what happens is day one, it'll hit like 60% of the supplies just because everyone's been stockpiling. But then mm -hmm. after that, it falls off because there just isn't as much investment and a lot of people and like people get to it eventually. But I think even on the, the most recent, not the most recent, but like on ND, for example, it took like, it still took... A couple of weeks. The fastest you can do it, I think, is eight days because you have to kill Villastraws twice for the Scarab Lord quest. But I think no. it still took a couple of weeks on ND. But like in Classic, honestly, because the, the population is there and the players are invested, I think it's going to take eight days on most of the high pop servers. Some of the low pop servers might take longer, but I can't see it lasting more than eight days. Well, it also depends on if people are going to be intentionally delaying in order to farm Scarab Lord mounts. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Which could happen. Possibly, I guess. Yeah, which could happen. Um, so what I wanted to add, Mad Season, about what you said with, with Phase 3 being yep. so heavy, something else, and this is something else I kind of have a, an issue with, the phases are, are basically two patches bundled together. That's, that's how they're approaching it. Phase 1 is 1.2, yep. Phase 2 is 1.4, so on, right? Phase 3 is 1.6. So because phase three is 1.6, it's also 1.5. What happens in patch 1.5 is they upgrade a lot of the loot in MC and uh, they, they not necessarily just upgrade, but uh, they add a bunch of items into Molten Core, a, a ton of items into Molten Core. So what my concern is, is that if this Molten Core update comes in phase three instead of phase two, it ends up being you're doing molten core with like the same drops forever and ever and ever, and it's going to take away from rating, right? I, tier two is not going to drop in molten core. That, that's something that they're they're not going to do. But um, yeah, as far as the like onslaught girdle, flame guard gauntlets, uh, a lot of the really good items that drop in, not not all the really good items, but a lot of them, uh, bone they're not going to be put in. Uh, well, bone reavers is put in from the beginning, if I remember correctly. Oh, but right. it gets changed a bunch of times in vanilla, and the final version of it is really, really strong. So you're going to have the really, really strong version of bone reavers in from the beginning. Is that Red Pryo or is, is that Warrior? Warrior uh, Pryo, don't don't no, listen to. We're him. just gonna Warrior we're Pryo. just gonna disenchant it because we need the Nexus crystals. I think. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. We'll we'll see how it goes. Um, my my typical rule for like uh, loot council stuff is like PVE prio right. So if we have a like if we have a rep paladin, how how we typically do this is like I, I would get like a, a two I would be like slotted for a two handed weapon, um, mm -hmm. but then we'd give like another two handed weapon if the other two handed weapon drops before, uh, like whatever I'm slotted for, then the other two handed weapon would go to somebody else. Uh, and then I, I wouldn't like, I, I wouldn't just get like every two hander or something like that. But like, if there's, for example, we had a situation where I was going to get a bone reavers, um, but then beat of came out. I got slotted for Ash Gandhi, and then we had two more bone reavers drop, I believe before we got an Ash Gandhi, and I, and I passed on both of them. I had to, right. Cause if, if we're following our loot list, then it's like, okay, somebody else should get this for PVP or something. I, I know it's PVE prio, but that's, that's kind of how we handled it in the past. Um, we've gotten screwed by that a little bit, but that's, that's kind of what we thought was fair at the time. So yeah. Yeah. Loot man. It's, it's, it's tough. Like I said, it's, there's a high pension for drop. So mm -hmm. I understand fully. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. I'm not so that, comment on that. None of that. <laughs> no, well, give us your opinion. Give us your opinion. I'm just kidding. Hey, well, you're the one who's bringing a boomkin to your raid, so. <laughs> true, true. What's on the math? Do the math. Take a look. No, I, I think I think boomkin's fine. They're just they're that's really uh having a having to deal with uh the looting of the boomkin or the loot the Spell loot stuff of boomkin. It's pretty annoying. So. And and innervate and com uh combat res. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and dying. I mean, they might not have the mana to cast it, but <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and move on to the next question. My phone, right. for some reason, got locked. Um, is there anything that you would recommend that you must do? This is on Twitter, by the way, guys. Tweet at us, hashtag ClassicCast, and, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking, I'm searching through hashtag ClassicCast. Um, is there anything that you must do? This is from Patty. Uh, once you hit level 60. So, for example, like in, in Burning Crusade, you, you would get like the, um, you, you try and get the, uh, the keys for the heroic dungeons. That's what you would be trying to do. Is there anything that you guys would suggest to do once you hit level 60? Depends uh, on the class. Oh, sorry, good man. Anixia attunement is is going to be like your your equivalent to the the Burning Crusade King. That's that's your biggest attunement for fresh level sixty. Well, it depends on the phase. Oh yeah, it still is the biggest, like the longest attunement chain. Mm -hmm. You have molten core attunement, of course, which is pretty straightforward. That just goes through molten uh, no black rock depths and. Um, mm, as far as like, if you're just talking about stuff like attunement, I mean, you have some dungeons as well. Like, I, mm -hmm. the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get all the keys. I want to get the keys to Strathholm, Skullamance, uh, Upper Black Rock Spire, which is needed for Anixia attunement. Uh, I want to be the key master. I think that's like a good goal for anyone. Just get all the keys. It, people will even pay you gold sometimes. I remember on my Rogue, I had the uh, UBRS key, and it was kind of a pain to get, so... Sometimes they'd just take me along, open the door, give me some gold, and I'd head out. So it's kind of a way to make gold as well. Mm -hmm. Not sure if that'll happen this time because I think people have more knowledge in general and they know how to actually get the key, but it's worth experimenting with. I, I think it's always because a lot of times people just don't want to do it. So I, I do think it's always. Yeah, the gems. Yeah. The gems are so like hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say probably get your epic mount. Even before attunements, you hit 60. Take a day, take 24 hours or 30 hours, depending on how fast you farm gold. Get your epic mount first thing. It'll pay off. It'll pay off so much because you you will do everything subsequently faster. Epic mount is really really valuable. Um, so I, I do think it's a little bit different if you play horde, or if you play alliance. Um, I think if you play alliance, what you should do is you go to Iron Forge and, and you stand on the corner of the bridge and you press Z, you unsheath your weapon and you stand there and say, hey, everybody, look at me, I'm level 60. If you're Horde, you, you go on the hut over the mailbox. And uh, that's that's what I would suggest. Again, it's a little bit different uh, for Horde and Alliance, but uh, that's that's what I would definitely suggest once you hit level 60. Make sure that's the first thing that you do. Stand there for two or three hours, flex on everybody, all the lobies who are running through town, uh, and then go from there. So, yeah. No, in all seriousness, yeah. I, I agree with Stay Safe. I think I think getting your epic mount is really important because uh, it, it's it's one of those things that it's a permanent upgrade. You get it, you're there forever, and then like you said, you can you can go to dungeons faster. You can get materials faster. You can farm fast. Everything is faster whenever you have an epic mount. Yeah, I also want to say to add on to that, if you are a warlock or a paladin, I've had people say that they're going to wait till phase two Not to get right. their class epic mount because the quest chain can't be completed or started until phase two because you need dire mall for both of them oh, that's right. if you're a warlock or a paladin the second you hit 60 in phase one uh don't wait buy your epic mount mm -hmm. buy a normal normie epic mount don't wait for phase. yeah no I, I totally agree and there's there's reasons for that one it's it's because of the time and everything else that was mentioned but also from like a like a combat perspective you're casting a spell right so let's say let's say you're casting as a paladin or a warlock you're casting your mount it's a spell Mage runs into you, blink, counterspell. Now you're locked out for 10 seconds and he can kill you. Um, if you're regening mana while you're mounting up to the next place, you're, sorry, the next place, it ticks your five second rule. So basically I cast a spell and then I don't regen for another five seconds. So I'm not getting spirit regen. So yeah, that's, uh, that, that's just like one thing. Um, yeah. So that's just something from like a combat perspective. That's why I don't I don't even like the casted mounts in PvP, especially. So yeah. Yeah. Or if you have any sort of uh, cast speed reduce, like if you have Curse of Tongues, like your cast oh, yeah. time is scuffed. Uh, there, there's a lot of memes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know. I don't understand why people are question marking. Do you guys know like what, what's so hard to understand about you? You cast a. I don't know. I don't know what's so hard to understand about that. <laughs> but, uh, question mark? Question yeah, mark? question mark. Yeah, it, it, it costs you mana too, so you lose mana uh, whenever you do it. So if you're farming and stuff with a with a casted mount, you lose a lot of mana and, and stuff like that. So that'll impact your farming as well. 
Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's that's huge. In fact, for a long time, and this is based off like private server experience, I was telling people to, uh, if you're a Warlock or a Paladin, when you hit 40, go train your Charger or Felsteed and then go actually buy for 20G a, or, or sorry, 10G a physical mount and use that mount instead of the Dreadsteed because of the mana thing. Uh, mm -hmm. That's like a super tryhard min maxi thing, but it's actually super beneficial. Mm -hmm. I mean, also like the PvP thing, you can't be spell locked, interrupted, or whatever. Um, but it's the opposite on Classic WoW, where the mount itself is mm -hmm. like 80G, and then the training is like 10, uh, 20G or so. So I would say don't spend the 80G. Just just use the Charger or Felsteed when you hit 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would say like in general, like what to do at 60, it's all contingent upon what kind of player you are, what what priorities you have, and then also your class to a certain extent. If you know you you hit level sixty at your own pace and you're not really too concerned with like cutting edge content and always you know min maxing and stuff and rating, then I definitely agree. I mean, get your mount, farm, go freaking go light up Red Ridge or uh, you know or, or Stone Town or wherever you want to go as as Alliance or it. Like, go have some fun um, on it because like you only hit sixty once. You know, like that first sixty in classic. Wow, that's only gonna happen one time. Then it's never happening again. So just enjoy the moment as mm -hmm. much as possible. If you're trying to, you know, serve our first and going hard, then you probably already know what you need to do for the most part. If you're a mage, you probably want to prioritize Hydraxian rep. If you're like Hunter, for example, go hit up the crater, get those leathers as fast as possible. If you're like a warrior, you know, or a rogue, depending on who's going to get the Uber's key, make sure you get those runs going for your guild. But like at the end of the day, I would say like, you hit level 60, go just have fun, celebrate, do some world PvP, AFK on Iron Forge Bridge, like S fan said. Like do do the thing that's gonna make you happiest because that's only gonna happen one time and then it's it's done. Yeah, and that and that's what's important, right? The the question was specifically for somebody who's like like they're tryharding, right? Um the reality of it is WoW is a game that's meant to be played the way that you want to play it. And, and you should absolutely play the game that way. Like if, if you want to just like run around, screw around, you, maybe you hit level 60 and you're like, you know what? I want to go run lobies through dead mines. You know, some people like some people like doing that. I used to do that. I, I would just for fun. Like I was just bored, not doing anything. I was like, okay, yeah. Like I, I'll just go grab some people and be like, hey, you guys want dead mines run? They'd be like, sure. And uh, I'm just way of pulling. Yeah, I would just I would just pull a bunch at the same time and you know, kill it in a few pulls, whatever. And it was just like, it was fun for me, you know? Um, but, uh, if you're really try harding, then yeah, I think absolutely, uh, doing something like getting your epic mount or something would, would be a good idea. So, um, <laughs> this is a question for mad season. Well, mad season create a paladin alt for the paladin police force. Hmm. That's, I that's, you would go paladin. For that reason, yeah. Well, it's it's another plate where it sounds tempting. Just just for ass fans, Gil, <laughs> I might have to do that. Well, here's the thing. I, I think people see your transmog, right? They, they see the the Drake Talon spall or the Drake Talon pauldrons and the flame guard gauntlets, mm -hmm. and they see all the gear you're wearing, right? The onslaught girdle, and they look at you and say, "You know what? That is a ret paladin. That is all ret paladin gear." <laughs> so clearly, Mad Season probably is a paladin player. I think that's how most people feel. Uh, right off the bat, whenever they see your character, so that's that's probably where that question comes from. So. Dude, can you imagine you, me, McConnell, rolling together? Mm -hmm. We press one button between all of us, and yeah. just everything dies. It'd be amazing. <laughs> it'd be great. It'd, it'd be a I lot like Red. My name now. <laughs> it'd be a lot it's like Red Cryo and Guild, right? Yeah, of course, of course. No, uh, I think. Uh, no, I think uh, the Palin Police Force stuff, the, the World PvP streams and stuff that I used to do, a, a lot of people really enjoyed those. And uh, we wouldn't always just take Paladins, even though it, it was fun whenever we had, like, Holy and Rep Paladins just running around World PvPing. But, uh, you know, we, we always had, like, random people tag along and stuff like that, and it was, it was always a lot of fun. It was really enjoyable. Um, here's a good question. This is from uh, our good friend, uh, former class cast attendee guest CivHD CivHD asks Civ. question for everyone what are some classic add-ons that you guys recommend must haves or just ones for fun do you guys have any off the top uh, of your head 
Peggle Still... is probably the most important add-on. <laughs> oh, did they, did they make a Peggle for Classic? Absolutely, yeah. I am very proud to say I had the highest Peggle points on all of the Classic web games. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I didn't even realize they made a Peggle. Uh, they made a Peggle add-on for it. I think. Um, I, I think different add-ons are. Add-ons are, add-ons are meant to kind of. They're, they're supposed to make you kind of customize your, your your gameplay, right? More how you want to play the game. I think there's some that people say like, oh, you have to get this or you have to get that for rating. For example, like uh, on on the 1.12 client in the private server scene, a lot of times healers or like healing officers and guilds would require all the healers to get Luna unit frames because it had healing prediction, right? Like it would, it would give you like a, whenever you heal somebody, it shows their health and then it shows like a green bar of like, oh, you're probably going to get healed this much. Um, which is something that was, uh, I mean, that's something that, that you see in retail while wow too, but, um, that, that's something that ended up being a big deal in classic on, uh, on private servers. So I'm sure there's going to be some stuff like that. Now, uh, there is an add on actually. So, so Siv and I were talking about this, uh, was this today or a few days ago? I, I don't remember when this was, and this actually just reminded me there's an add on that has like a, it's like a kill count. Right where where it I, I forgot I forgot exactly what it was called but it's like it, it it keeps track of how many of each mob that you kill from the point that you have your add on onwards and I think if hmm. somebody made something like that by classic launch it would be really cool to see like oh I killed X amount of this thing I killed X amount of that thing by the time I hit sixty I forgot what it was called it was like mob info I think that's what it was I think it was like mob info or something. Um, yeah, just how many boards did it take me to, to get to 60? Who knows? I think something like that could be cool. Um, but I don't, I don't know if somebody's going to have that ready to go for classic launch. That'd be cool for PvP. Mm. Keep track of player names. Yeah. Well, there was how many a... times... Oh, go ahead. Well, I, I was going to say there was an add-on for that. Like, uh, kill, kill on site list. KOS list would keep track of how many times you killed somebody, how many killing blows you had on somebody, and how many killing blows they had on you. Uh, but I don't know if they're going to have that for classic ready to go yet. <laughs> I would say, like, outside of that, like, the big ones are Scatter or DPS Mate. I was able to get Scatter. Do you guys have Scatter? I like Scatter more than DPS Mate. Uh, oh, I like what did yeah, I, I run with? I ran with, like, Recount. Somebody ported the old Recount to the classic beta, yeah. and that's what I ran with. Yep. I, I, I'm I not yeah, the biggest you, fan you, of Scatter. You guys can go to, I think the website's called Warcraft Tavern. It has a lot of add-ons. You can yeah. go take a look. But, like... Questy, I would say, is important for people. I would say Omni CC, a lot of people might want to have. Um, classic cast bars, um, you know, like KTM Threat Major, DBM, if you're going to be raiding. Um, those are like the really big ones, I think. Yeah. That's, and that, that's that, a lot of that stuff is like raid specific, you know, like, because um, not everybody's going to be raiding, right? But if you're raiding, like, those are absolutely like, you guys should do this. Um, your, your guild's probably going to going to uh require a lot of that stuff not require necessarily they'll, they'll probably require a threat meter but like you'll probably just want a damage meter <clears throat> one that i really like um or a couple but one that i really like is leatrix plus uh it's kind of like the equivalent of lazy pig or azeroth autopilot um auto accepts quests auto turns in quests skips cutscenes, stuff like that it's got a whole bunch of options like Az azeroth autopilot um, especially for like speed leveling, if you're trying to get to level 60 fast, might be a good idea. I think it vendors your your grays too. I think too. Um, outfitter and trinket menu, basically the ability to swap out gear very very quickly, um, makes things a lot more convenient than having to dig through your bags every single time you want to swap gear. Uh, stuff like that, just it's just conveniences, but over the long run, it pays off so much. Do you say enemy cast bar stay safe? Yeah, uh, I had one called classic cast bar. Yeah, I mean, just any kind of enemy cast bar add-on that works. Mm -hmm. That works, please. Somebody make one that's not scuffed, please. Well, dude, <laughs> something the, like that. Really. On uh, like even on the 1.12 client, like I don't, I don't remember ever seeing. A, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I just never found one. I never found a good cast bar. Like they were all it's like there was something wrong with all of them. Like one thing or another, every single one. So I, I think it's just how I, I think it's how the game is designed. I don't know if it's going to be different with like the new API or something, but I, I think it has to do with how like information is processed in vanilla. Yeah, I heard something like most I, this could be wrong, but I heard that most enemy cast bar add ons take the information from like your combat log. 
so it doesn't tell you when when spells stop being cast so that's mm-hmm. why they continue after a spell cast stop it's mm-hmm. so annoying but if, if somebody is like smart and knows maths and computers and programming and java plus minus yeah please make make, make a good enemy cast bar please now one thing that just came to mind is i think it was called weapon swing timer uh if you're a melee if you're a melee weapon swing timer was really good uh it's it's in the same style you can you can set it to where it'll actually look like a cast bar so it looks like it fits into the base ui and um which is cool the the guy who made it is left-handed glove and he uh he, he actually watches my stream because I, I actually was talking about that and then he happened to be in chat and he was like wait yeah that's a good idea let me update it and i was like wait what so yeah, it's, <laughs> so I was like, well, that's convenient, but um, but yeah. So I, I think uh, I, I think weapon swing timer is really good if you're in melee. So, yeah, especially for PvP. But uh, what I'd say is I go with, like a lot of the little convenience stuff, but not trying to go too major. Mm-hmm. I like sell junk because back then you didn't have a like an organized junk or sell junk button in classic. It just sells all your grays with a click of a button and you can like mark items as junk right so if you get like i don't know troll sweat or something or something that's borderline useless or that's just clogging up your bags maybe a silk cloth i think sometimes Mm -hmm. well i think you want to put silk cloth into bandages if i remember correctly vendors for more Mm -hmm. uh i like that one um i like to use bartender i know people are kind of contested on that but I don't really like the default UI too much, especially in classic. If you're if you're playing a class with just a ton of buttons, like like a warlock or something. I support you on that, Matt. Season, I love bartender too. Yeah, although one of the things I will be doing, and I'll have to go back to the original UI, not to get too off topic here, is I want to make a PvP video uh, once classic launches, and I have to have the default UI like upscaled. So just like your old screenshots, I'm gonna have a. Uh, Drowning pool music, Lincoln Park, and all that old stuff. So I guess I'll have to forego uh, for that, but it, it should be a good time. Other yeah, yeah. items, though. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of what I used in the beta. Um, as far as Questy is concerned, it is super useful. There are no quest waypoints in Classic, or, or even like markers for quests, like uh, on your mini map, right? A lot of people will find that useful, certainly, but I think there is kind of some value, and this is the boomer in me speaking again, of if it's your first time, just kind of reading the quest, right? It kind of adds a, a bit of exploration to the, to the game uh, and, like, finding these hidden quests and whatnot. Uh, so I'd say, like, at least try it without Questy first if you want to, if, if that aspect appeals to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, you can just go for that. Another one that's going to be important are battleground timers, because I believe those weren't on by default. Like when you know you take an AV flag, right? You you just basically have to to count it out when it's going to cap. I think that's pretty important. Yeah. Mm, I think it's all off the top of my head. Oh, um, gear score. How could we forget? Gear oh, score? there you go. Yeah, gear my score. Gosh, dude. That on, dude. <laughs> dude that just important. blow my computer to smithereens if somebody tries to make a gear score add on and people try and make that meta. Oh, man. <laughs> just just kick the thing over and just. I'm going back to Pentium 3, dude. I, I... <laughs> Watch this... someone make an achievement add on. Somebody joked about this the other day. In oh, this God. Discord admin, but they said they're gonna make an achievement add-on that actually can track from your armory the kills you've gotten, and then basically like populate an achievement interface on your screen. Watch, watch somebody make an achievement add-on and bring achievements to classic. Well, it's like looking for more Ragnaros like achieve. I think I, I mean I think like if you're looking at stuff like like kill tracker of mobs like in that add-on we talked about earlier. I think that's one thing. When it gets to the point where you're talking about achievement points and stuff, like these are the kind of things that like to me that was like like there's specific things that happened that were like beginning of the end things. Achievements. Yeah. Gear score. I I think stuff like that is just like I have like PTSD from it. Like I I, I hate all that stuff, right? Because of the whole link achieve thing like you were talking about tips. And and also from gear score, like literally Blizzard adopted this and they were like, "You know what?" We're gonna. Everybody's using gear score anyway. Let's just make everything based on item level. But um, the good thing, the good thing is that Blizzard has talked about if if there are add-ons and stuff in the game uh, that people make, 
and they take advantage of the new API or whatever to do some things that are like not in the, um, uh, they're not like in the same, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not like vanilla. They're not, they're not things that are vanilla, right? The same spirit. The same spirit. Thank you. The same spirit. I, I almost, I've been playing retail too long. I forgot spirit was a thing. So, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they yeah, thanks. Uh, so yeah, not the same spirit of vanilla. Then they're going to break them. So, uh, so yeah. I think uh, I think that's going to be good. That's that's at least a little bit comforting to hear, but um, yeah, very good, very very good. Uh, let's see. Let's take a few more questions here. Um, hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, what are some good professions to make gold? Or world activities to make gold. This is from uh, Jacob. I, I think this is a good... Uh, I'm assuming he means like wall leveling and stuff. And uh, there's a few different ways of looking at this. Uh, stay safe. Do you want to start actually? Good way to make gold. I would say as far as professions go, um, probably herbalism. Like herbalism is some quick bank. That's what I would probably say. Now, there are like better class specific gold farms if you're a hunter doing diamond stuff or if you can get down in the crater with leather working. But as far as just like sheer professions, probably just herbalism. Mm -hmm. I say this is it might sound weird, but I would say fishing, fishing, man. There's so many low level fish that you can get. As I remember that just are they're They're really good gold makers like uh, the deviate fish for the savory deviate delight. Uh, black mouth oil off the top of my head and you can do it at a low level like as far as leveling is up is concerned you see a pool go grab it and that could be a lot of gold i'm not sure like when the server first starts because the economy might be growing but fishing because a lot of people neglect it and i don't say that just because i'm joining joining a smooth mcgroove's guild but if you want to say just a fresh server i think skinning is going to be good because um, I think a lot of your gold earned will just be from vendoring. Because again, a lot of people, you know, they'll be training spells. They won't really want to, you know, spend their gold. So I think just skinning, you, I mean, you're killing the mobs anyway. Grab their skins, vendor them, possibly auction them if you can make more from that. Uh, yeah, I say skinning, fishing are like my two favorites. Fishing mm -hmm. for more an established server, skinning for a newer server. Okay. Yeah, those are good. I'd say if you have like an established like five-man group, because I'm pretty sure we're going to have the 10-man UBRS and the five-man five, uh, five man Strath and Scylla, right? That's what they said? If if that's the case... It's going to be everything 1.12, basically. 1.12, yeah. Yeah, so like, exactly what you said. So reduce... I, I would say Righteous Orb Farming in, like, Strath. Like, uh, if you can get a really good group going, you can make mm. a lot of money. Like, because uh, usually, I mean, a lot, a lot of times those are done in, like, 10-mans and Zerg down and stuff like that. But if it's going to be five man, you get righteous orbs with a good group. You're going to have like a uh, really, really good time. Those are going to go for a lot of money for Crusader enchants. So I would say farm the crap out of Strat Living. Mm -hmm. um, so for, from my perspective, there's a few different ways to look at this, right? Some people like they, they might try and like level as fast as they can or whatever. And uh, if they want to do that, what they'll notice is let's say you pick up street, uh, skinning or fishing. I, I, I kind of like skinning because to me, you can it's just like having extra stuff to vendor. And especially early on in the life of a server, yeah. you're going to have a lot of that stuff just packed on the auction house. And it's not even going to sell much more than it's not going to sell much more than uh, what it would vendor for anyway. So having extra stuff to vendor just gives you a little bit more gold, better for repairs, better for your skills, this kind of stuff. Saving gold slowly, slowly, slowly to be able to get your mount at 40 if that's what you want to do. Now, something to keep in mind, kind of like I was saying earlier, if you're trying to level as fast as possible, which I don't necessarily recommend, I think people should just play the game however they want to play it. Um, you'll notice that you try and skin something and then it's like, oh, it failed. Oh, it failed. And it's like, okay, okay, well, I just had to loot it and I, it's, it's like slowed me down because, okay, failed. Or like I'm fishing, right? You have to actually stand in place to fish. And then, oh, nothing, you know, I missed it, right? Whenever, whenever you think you get a bite and you miss it. Um, so some of this stuff, it might feel like kind of slow or whatever. But I think if you're trying to make gold while leveling, uh, I, 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 I agree. I, I, think, I think fishing, I think skinning and, and herbalism too, I, I think are all good options. And, and especially with herbalism, I think herbalism pays off really well. Fishing pays off well too because people just love deviant delights and stuff like that. So um, I, I think 
a lot of the stuff with professions, you're you're making an investment, right? You're making a time investment in order to be able to make more money mm -hmm. later on, even if it's going to affect you leveling slowly or whatever, or affect your leveling speed a little bit. So, yeah. I think something to add on to that too, while we're talking about gathering professions, that a lot of people might not realize, and this was something that surprised me. You asked me that question earlier, is that um, you can't track both herbs and minerals at the same time. I totally forgot about that. So mm -hmm. grabbing both mining and herbalism isn't really the best unless you want to switch between that. And also another thing to keep in mind is if you're leveling with someone as well. Like you don't, you both of you probably don't want to grab mining or both herbalism as well, right? So just something to keep in yeah, mind, I think. Point. Good points for sure. Um, let's take one more good question. Uh, let's take one more good question. Um, and then we got to do the face reveal, right? No, it's here, dude. It's he's on camera right now. That's him. Show Helm oh, off. That's him. Yeah, Helm off. <laughs> what? You hyped me up before the call. No, this is the this is the face reveal, dude. Actually, you know what's gonna be crazy is we're gonna find out that Mad Season is actually the he's actually the meme. He's actually gonna be the uh, like little little do we know he's actually the push it to the limit meme from uh, he's only done this one before. <laughs> <laughs> were you a big dude, white TV guy? Like that. Yeah, 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 it's old school internet back then. I, I, yeah. I lived on that website. But yeah. dude, if I looked like that, I think I'd be forced to use a face cam. Come on. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I would have hair game that would match yours. <laughs> I'd be the only streamer. It'd be better. Uh, man, it'd be, it'd be good. It'd be really good. Um, Especially in the classic WoW scene. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, this is a good Why question. Why are we all balding, man? Hey, well, speak for yourselves. Uh, uh, this is uh, this, this is this is from because somebody. Because Asmongold has hosted each of us, man. The host is a is a curse and a it's gift. a parasite. Yeah, it's a parasite. <laughs> yeah. So uh, clings to dead memes. It's a good name. It's a relative name. Uh, how do you plan to run big community events given that people will be presumably spread out in classic? Uh, I think that's a great question, and, and I think that's something that, especially from what we saw in the beta, I, I think that's something that people. Uh, at least from my perspective, from, from like a stream perspective, that's something that I, I really, really enjoyed doing, being involved in like big community events and, and just seeing people come together, um, on stream. Now I think it's not necessarily stream specific, right? Anybody can do community events. And I encourage people to do community events on whatever server they're on. That's what classic wow is all about. It's, it's about the community the, and community isn't always a positive thing, right? There's there's good part of the community and there's bad part of community, but at the end of the day, you can't have good without the bad. That's how I feel. Um, yep. With that being said, I, I think the main thing to focus on in the question is you saying with people being so spread out, and yeah, I, I do think that people are going to be spread out on different servers. I, I we we've talked about like what server we want to play on, and, and we've said from the beginning our plan was for for us to you know classic cast crew to play on the same server. I think people have kind of okay, well, we'll play, we'll play, we'll play here, and we'll play here, and then it just kind of has naturally turned into a lot of people probably playing on the same server. Um, whether you want to play on that server or not, uh, that's entirely your decision. Uh, I think the the whole concept of, like, streamer servers and stuff like this that people worry about, I think that's a whole nother discussion, and I think a lot of people are going to be in for a rude awakening uh, as, from from that respect. I think the things that, I think the things that people worry about aren't, or most of the things that people worry about aren't necessarily a thing. And two, I think that just because you're not on a big streamer server doesn't mean that you're not going to experience some of the things that people are worried about. So moving on, uh, I think the hope is getting the tournament realms for dueling tournaments and stuff so we could have people who are, who are not on the server get to play together, right? I, I, think, I think that's, that's the hope, um, that we get some kind of access to tournament realms and mm. uh, something like that. And that's specific to like dueling tournaments or trying to host like pre-made versus pre-made tournaments, stuff like that. Um, I think as far as everything else goes, I mean, hey, that's it's on the server, right? If if you want to host a community event, you got to host it on your server, right? I I don't see how you could be on another server and do that. So, mm, what, what so do you guys lots think? of warlocks. Yeah, lots, <laughs> lots of warlocks. Of warlocks. Yeah. Uh, I guess I could uh, expand on that. Like, um, you know, as far as streamer servers are concerned, I was one of the people who was going to avoid streamer servers at first because, you know, I wanted, I felt like I wanted the full authentic experience and I felt, okay, well, streamers didn't exist back then. So I want to 
maybe avoid like the big streamer server, but like really through the beta, uh, again, I answered this earlier with what really surprised me is the uh, community events. And it, it really turned me on to it because um, it's just, again, you said it earlier and it, it sounds maybe a bit cliche, but the game really is about the community. And I feel like all of the events that get put on like the dueling tournaments and even going outside and stuff like that, you know, on a smooth McGroove server, he's going to do the, um, the fishing stuff as well. Right. Uh, again, I, I think, you know, for me personally, not everyone's going to like it, but I think just, it kind of strengthens, strengthens that community aspect a bit. So, you know, it's, it's not going to be for everyone though, certainly. So. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that, um, I mean, and this is what's going to happen. Like every server, and this happened before streaming was a thing too. Every server is going to have players that are popular. And every server is going to have players that kind of like uh, naturally will, will accumulate people that, you know, like being around them or they, they think they're funny or they're interesting. These, these are players that are going to kind of rise up. Um, a lot of these players might start streaming or something and, and they're going to have their own kind of uh, viewership and people who want to watch them on their server because they're good players or this or that or whatever. Um, mm hmm I mean, like for me, like even in Burning Crusade, like I, I like somebody else paid for my epic mount in Burning Crusade or my, my not my epic mount, my flying mount in Burning Crusade, you know, mm. and it's like I, I was uh, I, I, I had a pretty I was pretty well received in Burning Crusade. I, I think I had a lot of people who, who liked me and they thought I was good and stuff like that. Yeah. Hashtag sponsored. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sponsored. Uh, sponsored flying mount. So, um. Yeah, so that I mean, that, that, there's stuff like that's just gonna happen, right? You look back on like Swifty and stuff like that, right? It's like, oh, legendary player Swifty, like because of the videos and stuff that he did. Um, I don't think it's necessarily going to be specific to streamers. And for me, like, I didn't stream before I was playing private servers. I started streaming uh, a few months in, a couple months in, and my stream just kind of naturally grew to be the most watched stream in in like for private servers, right? Over the course of the next like seven months or whatever. Uh, I, I, every server is going to have somebody like that where it's just somebody either becomes a meme or, or they're, they're going to be really good and they're going to be interesting to watch. I mean, that's what happened. I mean, stay safe can, can uh, attest to it. Like I, I basically like, I, I was like a big meme, right? I was literally like a private server meme and, and, and that's what made people want to watch. Like what, like what the hell, why is this guy playing Rhett? Like what's wrong with this guy? It's got like brain issues, but <laughs> like, but yeah, that's just kind of how it goes. So uh, I think every server is going to have somebody like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, just to add on to that, I, like, you're right. Okay, so every every server in Classic WoW will have a streamer that steps up. And, you know, all these servers are so insular and they're so community-driven that there will be a streamer inevitably that will gain attention and traction on each server. Um, you definitely can't compare that. And I'm not saying this is what you're doing, but I'm just saying in general, you can't compare, like, that one guy that's going to rise up or two guys that are rise up on each server. You can't compare that to, like, the streamer server with Asmund and Soda. Oh, oh yeah, and no doubt, no doubt. And, yeah. yeah, you definitely can't do that. But mm -hmm. every server will have their one or two famous guys. Like, that's yeah. that's just the fact. Yeah. But I, I – and also what else I think is I think that – well, I think some of the issues that people bring up are very valid. I, I think that these other issues that people are just like um, – pe people are being kind of paranoid about other stuff too. And, and that's like a whole other thing. Um, but yeah. Do you guys have anything else you want to you add to that as far as community events goes? I was told there would be a face reveal and I'm still salty about <laughs> <laughs> Well – Guys, you saw it. This is exactly what Mad Season looks like. He looks just like his character. Believe it or not, he looks just like his character. Um, yeah, so he's very, very angry at his everything computer. but head. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Please, 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 if you haven't already, follow Tips. Follow Stay Safe. Follow Mad Season. Follow these guys. Check out their YouTube channels, Twitter, all that stuff. All that stuff is on the screen down below, uh, right under the face cams. I'm going to continue streaming uh, for a little bit. There is going to be a cooking stream tonight as well. Uh, there will be a cooking stream at my house tonight as well. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. And uh, we will see you guys next time. 20 days, baby! Sorry. Take care, boys. Mad season. Thank you for coming on, dude. Thanks for having me, guys.